Sun. Once upon a time, there lived a mother goat and her seven kids. They lived in a house in the forest. Mother goat loved her kids and would protect them at any cost. She would try to teach them lessons about her life experiences. And they were so cute. Four of them were girls and three of them were boys. One day, Mother Goat wanted to go to the market to sell the butter that she had made. But she had to leave her kids at home by themselves. My dear ones, I'm going to the market. Don't you dare open the door to strangers. Please be careful. Okay, okay Mum. Okay, Mom. When you come, show us your feet. If we believe that they are your feet, we'll open the door. Mother Goat set off right after kissing all her kids goodbye. Meanwhile, there was a treacherous wolf wandering in the forest, searching for some easy prey. The wolf was hiding behind a tree, patiently waiting for the little goat's mother to leave the house. As soon as she left, he knocked on their door. He wanted to make use of this opportunity. Who is it? My dear kids, it's me, your mother. I've brought you some wonderful and delicious fruit. Open the door for me. Hey, wait. I know this voice. This is the voice of the wolf. Remember what Mom said? The wolf has a deep voice. Oh, my dears, please be careful and don't make a mistake or the wolf will eat you all. As the wolf couldn't get past the door, he knocked on the door to try his chance again. This time, he really thinned his voice to make it sound like their mother's. My dear goats, I'm stuck outside. Come on, open the door for me. I'm so tired. I've brought you a lot of food. Why are you making your mother wait outside? He sounds like my mother, but we need to be sure. Mother, please stretch your legs out from under the door. Remember what we discussed? Show us your feet. So the wolf stretched out his feet. Of course, after seeing the dark feet, the goats realized that this was the wolf. Get lost! Get, Get lost. lost! You're not our mother! Her feet are white. Why the snow? We won't open the door. We won't open the door. We won't open! <laughs> the wolf got furious. He went to the bakery and bought a sack of flour. He came back to the kid's door and covered his feet in flour, making them completely white. This should work now. I'm going to catch the goats. You little goats. You can't escape from me. But the wolf had forgotten one thing. The little goats were very clever. Terrified of the wolf constantly hovering outside their door, they came up with a plan. My sisters and brothers, I have a feeling. I think that this wolf isn't going to give up easily and he's going to try to trick us. If this treacherous wolf comes to our door again, even if we see white feet, we'll peek from under the door. If it's indeed our mother, we'll recognize her smell from even behind the door. The goats gathered round and whispered the plan to one another. They all had a different task. With joy, the wolf knocked on the door again with his feet snow white covered in flour. This time he was so sure that he'd be able to trick the goats. Kids, come on, I'm your mother. Look what I bought you. If you open the door, I have a gift for all of you. Here are my snow white feet. Look from under the door. Did you see? Did you see my snow white feet? When the goats carefully looked at the feet, they realized that they were way too big to be their mothers. Yes, they're white, but they're huge. Kids, this is the wolf again, not our mother. Come on, let's carry out our plan. Okay, okay mother. mother. I'm opening the door right away. As they planned, everyone hid in a different place. One of them hid under the blanket, one under the bed, one inside the closet, one inside the oven, and another behind the curtains. And one of them went onto the roof. 
Her task was up there. Their plan was coming together perfectly. Finally, the little goat who knew that the time had come slowly pulled on the string that he attached to the door from inside the old big clock in the living room where he was hiding and the door opened. The door's open, Mummy. You can come in now. The wolf that entered the house was shocked to find it empty. Huh? He couldn't see a single goat anywhere. Suddenly, he noticed something moving under the blanket. The wolf walked there slowly, holding his hands out. He lifted the blanket. Uh, I've got you, little one. Did you think you could trick me? No one can escape from me. Rawr! The big sister was the one under the blanket. In her hand was a bottle of spicy red pepper. Suddenly she threw all of it at the wolf's face. And the goat under the bed poured the bottle of oil on the wolf's feet. There was oil everywhere. The wolf's face, mouth, nose and eyes were burning so he couldn't stand on the slippery floor and fell flat on the ground. Covered all in oil, the wolf rolled over and over towards the door, trying to escape. Help! Help! I'm burning! I'm burning! Isn't there anyone to help me? My eyes! My eyes are burning! I can't see anything! The kid, hiding in the big old clock, poked his head out and with a hoarse voice... Catch this treacherous wolf and punish him! He should know what it means to try to trick us. Upon hearing this, all the others started throwing the tomatoes they had stored in the living room from the freezer and also the marbles they played with to the wolf that couldn't run on the slippery ground. The goat on top of the roof threw a bucket of cold water over the wolf's head that was hardly able to come out the door. The wolf ran for his life as fast as he could. I'll never come to this house again. I got burned from the peppers they threw at me. I froze from the cold water and I'm covered in tomatoes. I'm a frozen tomato. If I had thought for 40 years, I would have never thought that these little goats could trick me. Either I've gotten very old, or these goats are really very clever. Towards evening, Mother Goat returned from the market. She had bought her little goats a lot of fruit and vegetables so that they could be healthy. Each one of them was fond of a different fruit. The mother did not forget any of them and chose them carefully. When she arrived in front of the door, she noticed the entrance was completely wet. She looked up and there was not a cloud in the sky and it wasn't raining. She knocked on the door and called out to the little goats. My little goats, I'm here. Open the door for me. I'm very tired and my hands are full of bags. I also have a surprise for you. Show us your, Show feet. Us your feet. Show us your feet. Mother goat stretched her feet under the door. The goats realised that these were their mother's feet right away. Her voice was also their mother's. They opened the door without hesitation. Ah! Mother goat screamed with shock when she entered the house. It was a big mess. Peppers and tomatoes were on the floor and furniture was scattered all around. <gasps> Mother goat was terrified. My God, what happened to this house? What is this? There are tomatoes and peppers everywhere. Are you okay? The little goats told their mother what had happened to them one by one. The mother was very sad, but was also very proud of her children. Once again, she realized how clever they were. Later, they all cleaned their house together. They ate their dinner. My smart little ones, I love you all so much. You did well today. You acted together and you defeated the bad wolf. I'm proud of you. It makes me so happy to be the mother of such clever goats. She hugged and kissed them one by one. 
The next day, they all went to the police to complain about the wolf. Oh. They told the forest police everything that had happened. The forest police congratulated the little goats for their bravery and cleverness. He even told them that if they wanted, they could become forest police when they grew up. The goats were very happy to hear this. The wolf was caught and sent far away. He was punished to never come back. The seven little goats lived happily ever after, protecting one another just like their mother had taught them. Once upon a time, far away from the city, Mother Goat and her seven kids lived happily in a farm in the forest. The animals that lived in this farm had no owners, so they ran the farm themselves. Every year, one of them would be nominated president. The animals would produce their own food and live together in harmony. They respected one another and tried to do the right thing. Doing so helped avoid any conflicts in the farm. Mother Goat's job was to collect milk from every animal that produced milk and she sold it in the market. She brought the money to the president so they could use it for the farm's needs. That year was Dog's turn to be president. He was responsible for the farm's security. From time to time, things disappeared in the farm. Everyone knew it was Dog's fault, but nobody dared to say anything because they were scared of his bark and big teeth. Unwillingly, the animals handed over management to Dog with a ceremony. I don't trust the dog. He still hasn't found the thief who stole our eggs recently. He never even looked for them. It'll be a tough year. Everyone knew that Dog and the bad wolf who lived in the forest were good friends. We should all be on our guard. We all have children. No way! He wouldn't give our children to the wolf. Either way, we should take precaution. He might not be good at his job, but he won't betray us. <laughs> we'll see about that. While the farm animals talked among them, Dog was enjoying his new post. Everything was going well in the first few days. The animals went back to their jobs and business was running as usual. There was nothing to worry about. One night, Mother Goat was awoken by screams and she immediately went outside to see what was going on. My children! My babies! They're gone! What's going on? Bad wolf kidnapped all the chicks! But how did this happen? They all approached Dog. His snores were so loud that they resonated all across the farm. Mother Goat knocked on the kennel's door. But Dog didn't wake up. I 
know what to do. Upon hearing roosters crowing, Dog got startled and hit his head in the kennel ceiling, thinking it was morning. What? What? What's happening? What kind of president are you? Bad wolf kidnapped all my chicks while you slept soundly. Calm down, everyone. Maybe the chicks went for a walk. At this hour? It seems somebody helped Bad Wolf. No way! You can't look after your children! Are you not the president? We're supposed to come to you when we have problems. Everybody back to bed. We'll look for the chicks in the morning. All animals went back to bed worried. Something fishy is going on around here. We have to be careful. The next morning, under Dog's leadership, they searched for the chicks in vain. It seemed as if the poor chicks had vanished into thin air. All farm animals looked for the chicks until late in the evening. But they came back to the farm empty-handed. Mother Chicken was sobbing. No need for despair. You can always lay more eggs. Upon hearing this, Mother Chicken lunged at Dog and pecked him many times. That was what Dog had wanted. So he locked Mother Chicken in the coop. All farm animals went to bed early due to exhaustion. After they fell asleep, Dog sneaked out of his kennel and opened the farm gates. In the darkness, Big Bad Wolf turned up. Where have you been? I've been waiting for hours. I had to make sure everyone was asleep. You think it's so easy to fool everyone in such a big farm? Fine, fine. Cut it short. What do you want this time? The goat kids. They cost a lot more. The big bad wolf gave all he had in his wallet to Dog. <laughs> there we go. Just show me the goat's place already. The wolf stealthily approached the house where Mother Goat and the kids lived. The bad wolf went directly to Little Goat's room and began putting them in the sack. The startled goat kids huddled quickly and started screaming as their mother had taught them to do in such an emergency. Wolf was shocked, but wasn't about to give up on his prey. He leaped out of the window with the sack on his back and fled. Mother Goat, who had woken up due to her kids' screams, understood what happened and immediately ran after Wolf. Help! He stole my children! Help! Mother Goat, along with Cat and Rooster, began to tail Wolf. Not long after, Wolf disappeared in the darkness of night. 
Mother Goat sat on a rock and started crying desperately. She heard her baby screams, but unfortunately she couldn't reach them. Just then, they heard wing flaps above them. Hey, follow me. I can see them. Mr. Owl could see Wolf thanks to his night vision. They followed Owl to Bad Wolf's den. No, we should come up with a plan first. Mr. Owl is faster than us, so while we distract the wolf, he can fly back to the farm and get help. We can all attack and beat the wolf. Owl flew back to the farm. Mother Goat, Rooster and Cat approached the house window and they saw Wolf and Dog shaking hands. Now everything makes sense. What are we going to do now? We'll wait for help to arrive. Meanwhile, the little goats tried to make sense of the situation. The youngest ones were so afraid they began to cry. We have to do something. We have to remain calm. Shh! Don't you cry now. Remember what Mom taught us? Stay calm. Be brave. Think and act. Yes, that's right. I have an idea. Listen to me. The little goats kept whispering and giggling among themselves. After their talk, one of them knocked on the locked door. Hey! That wolf! Look over here! The wolf approached the door. What? What do you want, you scoundrels? We have to go to the toilet. Toilet? <laughs> you can hold it in. Be patient. I'm taking you to the market to sell you all. <laughs> Suit yourself, Bat Wolf. There are seven of us. Think of all the mess we're gonna make. Bad Wolf and Dog looked at each other. You're scared of seven kids? Wolf unlocked the door and they took the kids to the tree across the house in a single file. In the meantime, Mother Goat saw what was happening. Come on, do what you have to do, but be quick. Not with you looking at us. Yes, you have to turn around. Fine. Fine. Be quick. As soon as they turned around, one of the kids rammed Wolf and the other Aye. rammed Dog so hard that they were startled. The other kids began to butt the two accomplices. There's my babies. Come on, it's our turn now. Cat leaped out of the tree where he had been hiding and lunged at Wolf and scratched him. Rooster pecked at Dog's head with all his strength. The last hit came from Mother Goat with a mighty headbutt that sent both Wolf and Dog all over the ground. Rooster and Mother Goat were so happy to be reunited with their children. Rooster took his chicks under his wing to warm them up. 
Mother Goat hugged her kids and kissed each and every one of them. My dear children, I'm so proud of all of you. Owl took all the farm animals to the scene. There they are. Mother Goat told the animals everything. Everyone learned a lesson from it. From now on, the president of the farm was to be selected instead of taking turns. There would also be a farm council in which the farm animals would be able to make sure the president is doing a good job. They also decided to kick Dog out of the farm. Mother Goat was elected as the president because of her courage. Everybody returned to their home and lived happily ever after, except for Wolf and Dog. Once upon a time, in a small house there lived a young married couple. They were a very happy couple and were expecting a baby. I know it's important for our baby to be healthy, but I do hope we have a daughter, my love. Yes, I would love to have a daughter too. God willing, we'll have a daughter that will look like you. The day of the birth was getting closer, and the young mother excitedly awaited the birth of her baby. Every day the mother would look out the window and over the high wall and admire her neighbor's garden Ooh. filled with flowers and fruits. One day she noticed a yellow leaf plant that she had never seen before. I wonder what the name of that plant is. It smells wonderful. I'm sure it tastes amazing too. I have to eat that plant. I will go straight to my neighbor and ask her. Without wasting any time, the young mother left the house. But she had no idea that her next door neighbor was a cruel witch. She knocked on the door, unaware of the danger that awaited her. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. The yellow plant in your garden smells amazing. I'm pregnant and really craving for it. Is it an edible plant? Of course. I can give you a little. It tastes incredible and it's really good for humans. Then it'll be good for my baby too. Of course, dear neighbor. Especially for expecting mothers. But remember, because it's so valuable, you may only take one. <laughs> Everything is going just as I planned. The young woman finished mm. eating the piece she had taken as soon as she got home, but she wanted to eat more. Bring me more. If I don't eat it, I can't have this baby. <laughs> don't worry. I'll do everything I can to bring you more of that yellow plant. As night fell and it got dark, the helpless husband climbed over the tall wall and took the plant that his wife wanted. This went on for some time. Every night, the young man secretly entered the garden but he was uneasy about entering his neighbor's garden without permission. The bad witch had actually grown this plant to set up a trap to them. She knew that her neighbor was expecting a baby and that she would definitely crave for this with its smell. She had her eye on the baby for a long time. She was going to take the baby one way or another. One evening, as the man entered the garden again, the witch caught him red-handed. She now had the appearance of a witch. She was very ugly and was extremely scary looking. The poor man was frightened. Please forgive me. My wife is pregnant and she can't stop eating this plant. I was forced to do this because you said she could only take one. I know this is wrong, but if she doesn't eat it, I'm afraid that my wife will die. I'm in a very tough situation. 
I'll accept your apology only with one condition. You must give me the baby that is to be born. If not, I'll destroy all of you. The man had to accept this condition. When the time of the birth arrived, a beautiful baby girl was born. The witch went to their house immediately. Her name shall be Rapunzel. You shall raise her until she turns one. In exactly one year, I will come and take her from you. The helpless couple accepted. When Rapunzel turned one, the witch came and took the crying baby away from her mother and father and locked up the baby in a tower in the middle of the forest. She was going to raise the baby there. Many years passed. Rapunzel was now a beautiful young girl. As she had never cut her hair, it was several meters long. Her hair was golden blonde. She had deep green eyes. Whenever the witch went to the tower, she would call out to her. My dear blonde head girl, I'm here. Let your hair down. Rapunzel would throw her long braid down and the witch would climb up to the tower using her hair. Rapunzel thought that the witch was her mother. As she had never seen anyone else other than the witch until now, Rapunzel thought that she and her mother were the only ones in this world. She had a wonderful voice. She sang all day long until nightfall. Her voice echoed across the forest and all the birds would fly to the window to listen to her. Birds were her only friends. One day, a prince was wandering around the forest. When he heard Rapunzel singing, he wondered where this marvelous sound was coming from. As he followed the direction of the sound, he approached the tower and realized the voice was coming from there. I must meet the girl with this amazing voice. I wonder how I can go up this tower. As he desperately walked round and round the tower, he suddenly saw a witch calling to the top of the tower. He hid behind a tree at once and watched. My dear blonde-haired girl, I'm here. Let your hair down. Rapunzel let down her braided hair and the witch climbed up to the tower. I found how to go up the tower. Having waited for the witch to leave, the prince now called out to the tower, impersonating the voice of the witch. My girl, please let down your beautiful blonde hair again. I forgot something up there. I'm letting it down right away, mother. With one swift move, she let down her hair again. <sighs> the prince climbed up the tower using her hair and met Rapunzel. It was the first time in her life that the beautiful girl was seeing another person. Ah! Who are you? Why are you here? Where is my mother? There's no need to be afraid. I'm the prince of this country. Your wonderful voice brought me here. <gasps> to come up here, I had to impersonate your mother's voice. Oh. Rapunzel, who at first was very frightened, slowly realized that he wasn't a bad person. The prince was already charmed by her beauty. Oh. Days and months passed by. The prince was coming to the tower every day. When they spent time together, they didn't realize how fast the time passed. Then, he finally proposed to Rapunzel. Rapunzel, I want to live with you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? Uh, of course I'll marry you. I must now return to the palace. Hmm. I will try and find a solution to get you out of here at once. Rapunzel was very excited that she would finally see the outside world once she married the prince. She was so bored of living alone in the tower for all those years. He held Rapunzel's hair and headed down the tower. Unfortunately, the witch was there too and saw the prince. She immediately understood what was going on. She raged with anger. As Rapunzel was pulling her hair back up again, the witch held onto it and climbed up. She was so annoyed and furious. What's going on? Who's that just left? I've been hiding you up here to protect you from evil, but you, you've been talking to strangers and making friends with them.
He is the prince of this country. He asked for my hand in marriage, and I accepted. I'm so happy, mother. I was waiting for you to come and tell you all about it. What? What nonsense is this? I'll show you. The witch was so angry that with a pair of scissors she cut Rapunzel's long hair short as can be, and with her magic she then sent her to a very far away country. When the prince arrived at the tower the next day, he had no idea that the witch was waiting for him in the tower. Hi, Rapunzel. I'm here. Let down your hair, please. The witch let down the long braid that she had cut from Rapunzel's hair. When the prince reached the window of the tower, the witch was there to meet him. He was terrified the moment <gasps> he saw her. What a surprise, huh? You thought you were going to be able to take my girl away, who I've hidden for years? <laughs> As the witch let go of the braid, the terrified prince found himself on the floor. He fell on top of the bushes, but since he hit his head, he was blinded. Rapunzel was ever present in the prince's mind, so mounted on his horse, he searched for her everywhere. He swore that even if he had to go to the end of the world, he would find her. He searched and searched and searched for a very long time. Finally, one day, he heard a song. The voice was familiar to him. Ah, this is Rapunzel's voice. I finally found her. Galloping on his horse, he headed straight towards the sweet voice. He came to the door of the house Rapunzel was staying in. Rapunzel, I'm here. Open the door. I can't believe it. Is it really you? As Rapunzel opened the door, she cried when she saw the prince. She cried so much that her tears fell on the prince's face as he was kneeling. Her tears were miraculous, joyful tears. Suddenly, the blind prince opened his eyes. They hugged each other joyfully and celebrated this miracle. The prince was finally able to propose officially. They returned to the palace and started preparing for the wedding. Upon their return, Rapunzel and the prince looked for her real parents so they could share their news. They were incredibly happy to be reunited with their daughter after all these years. They had a beautiful wedding and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a lovely town. There lived seven little goats and their mother. One day, it rained so much that there were puddles everywhere. When the rain stopped, the seven little goats wanted to go out to play. Mom! Mom! The rain stopped! Can we go out and play? Well, okay, okay. But all of you need to put on your rain boots. We already did, Mom! Yay! <laughs> Look! I brought my toy dinosaur. It likes to play in the water, too. <laughs> Look, guys! I built a water slide for him. I wish there's a water slide big enough that even we could slide, too. I've heard about the city that has huge water parks. Yes, the teacher told me that there are enormous fun water parks in Dubai. Whoa! Let's go to Dubai! Mom was wondering and also thinking about taking a short trip to Dubai. It'll be great! The tallest building in the world is also in Dubai. But I can't remember the name. Hurry, let's go ask Mom. Mom, Mom, can we go to Dubai, please? Dubai? Where did you kids get that idea? Dubai has the greatest water parks in the world. And we're crazy about playing in the water. It also has the tallest skyscraper in the world. But I still can't remember the name. 
I think you're talking about Burj Khalifa. Hmm. Well, it's not a bad idea. I love water parks too. <laughs> Yippee! Meanwhile, the wolf disguised as a goat was listening to them outside their window. So you're going to Dubai, huh? You wretched goats! I'm coming too, of course, and this time I will succeed. <laughs> the trip preparations took two days. The day of departure had arrived, and the seven little goats and their mother set out for Dubai. Kids. We'll be landing soon. We'll leave our luggage in our hotel room so we can start our tour immediately. Where would you like to go first? Water, water park! park. <laughs> okay, water park it is. Yippee! They got off the plane and went to their hotel. They quickly got ready and went to the water park. Get ready for us, water park. Here we come. The wicked wolf might be after us again, so let's be careful, guys. Here we are, my children. This water park is as much fun for kids as it is for adults. Let's get our tickets. How many are you? Eight, please. You too. Enter through the door on the right. The rest through the door on the left. It's too crowded here. That's the only way I can take you all in. Gosh. Okay. Let's meet inside, girls. Okay, okay mom. mom. <laughs> that was so easy. Those goats are so naive. Okay, here we go, little ones. I'm going to help you. Right at that moment, the hat of the wolf got stuck in the door, exposing his two long ears. Mother goat saw that, jumped in and headbutted the wolf. The wolf flipped in the air and fell in one of the pools. Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Not water again. I can't stand water. Ah. <laughs> That'll teach him a lesson. Well, at least for now. <laughs> Let's enjoy the water park, my little ones. Let's go. <laughs> Yippee! Yeah! Yippee! Yeah! Yes! Yippee! This place is closing now. Let's go to the hotel and rest. Tomorrow, we're going to visit the tallest building in the world. They went back to the hotel. After dinner, they felt tired. It had been a full day, so they all went to bed. Good morning, everyone. Today, we'll go to the tallest building in the world. Are we ready? Yes! yes! Mommy, how tall is the Burj Khalifa? It's 828 meters which is equivalent to 2,717 feet. It feels like you're over the clouds looking down at the world. Wow, that's amazing! Unbelievable! That's really high! Here we are, my children! This time... There's no water. I wonder how you're going to save yourself in the skyscraper. You won't be able to escape this time. <laughs> Mom, 
This building is way too high. Won't it take a long time to go up there? No, it won't, because these are the fastest elevators in the world. Okay, are you ready to go up to the observation deck? Yes! After they spent some time on the terrace, the goat family was preparing to go down when the wolf in disguise cut in front of Mother Goat. And the winner is... You! Yes, madam, it's you! You've just won tickets for eight for a desert safari. Really? Us? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. When can we go, Mom? We can go right now, little one. Isn't it late? Isn't it better to go tomorrow? We don't want to get caught in a sandstorm at night time. No, my dear. It's perfectly fine. I've already checked the weather forecast. Okay, let's go to the hotel first so we can get some provisions. We can start the safari then. Yes! <laughs> Mother Goat went to the hotel and got some stuff, including a tent, in case they needed to sleep there. The safari had been enjoyable so far. However, the wolf was taking them further away little by little without them noticing. When it got dark, the wolf went to Mother Goat to carry out his plan. Uh, uh, it's dark, madam. So we need to stay here. We can't go back. It's very dangerous. Oh, no. But if you say so. Let's start setting the tent quickly. <laughs> this is perfect. I'll have a feast tonight. <laughs> Once he made sure all the goats were sleeping, he intended to carry out his plan. But as soon as he stuck out his head out of the tent, a strong gust of wind blew on his face. What in the world is going on here? Uh, 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 uh. Sand is all over my face. Nobody goes out of the tent. The sandstorm has started. Ah, you're talking about the sandstorm. Wait until you see a wall storm. <laughs> As soon as the wolf stepped out of the tent, the sandstorm strengthened and buried the wolf's tatty tent. No! No! I was so close! When the sandstorm was over, Mother Goat got out of her tent and saw neither the wolf nor the tent was there. Where's the guide? Hmm, he's gone. But his car is still here. That's strange. Let's go back to our hotel, children. This is the end of another adventure. Once upon a time, there lived an old woman in the deepest part of the forest. But she wasn't happy at all, because she was getting old. She always complained about it. Go 
God, why? Why did I get old? Look at my face. It's all wrinkly. And my hands. Everyone used to be amazed at how beautiful my hands were. Oh, I had a small waist. Now I'm hunched over, and I'm in constant pain. I would do anything, anything to be young again. The old woman kept repeating this. I would do anything, anything to be young again. Suddenly, the sky turned dark and lightning struck. A witch appeared out of the lightning. So you want to be young again? Yes, yes, I want it badly. And would you do anything for it? Yes, I'll do anything. I will make you young again, but on one condition. What? Let me do it right now. I will give you back your youth, but you have to bring me a well-fed child every month in return. The old woman was surprised by the odd request. Okay, I'll do it. The witch waved her magic wand and the old woman suddenly regained her youth. She was young and beautiful again, but now she was a witch too. Don't forget your promise or I will destroy you. The witch disappeared. The sun came out and the old woman was thrilled with her new appearance. But then she started to ponder. I'm in the middle of the forest. How am I going to attract children? No one ever comes by here. Let me think. How? How? Ah, oh, I've got it! She decided to make a house of cakes and sweets to attract children. She started preparations immediately. Before long, she built a house of cream on the roof, candy on the windows and cake on the walls. So she started catching children. But after a while, children stopped coming around her house. I haven't found any children this month. What am I going to do? I came across two little children in the woods, ma'am. I managed to bring them to the front of the house. They're eating cakes and candies. Hurry up. Well done! You did a great job! The witch immediately ran outside and found the children eating. Welcome, children! We, we were very hungry, so we started eating all the sweets from your house. Please, please forgive us! No worries! Bon appetit! If you don't have a place to stay, you can stay at my house. Thank you so much! My name is Hansel, and this is my sister Gretel. I was tired of being alone. Come on in. You must be cold. There's also hot chocolate inside. Hansel and Gretel were delighted. The young woman showed them to their beds and gave them hot chocolate. They fell into a peaceful sleep. now it's morning the visit is over 
Hansel, come here quickly. Get in that cage, quick! What is happening? Why did you lock me up? Hansel, I'm so scared. Stop whining. You're too skinny, Gretel. Quick to the kitchen. You will cook nutritious meals and then you and your brother will eat them. Gretel agreed against her will. She went into the kitchen and started cooking. Hansel kept some of the food in his pockets to avoid gaining weight. Gretel also threw her food in the trash without letting the witch see this. You're still so skinny! You'll eat more! Days passed and finally the day the witch would come for the children had arrived. It's time to send you to the witch queen. You'll cook well in the oven. <laughs> in fact, wait! I'll cook you this time to surprise the witch queen. <laughs> Gretel, throw more wood in the oven right away. Yes, ma'am. Gretel looked in the oven and the fire was ablaze. At that moment, she had an idea how to get rid of the witch. Ma'am, the fire is about to go out, but the oven door is stuck and I can't open it. I need your help. You incompetent girl! I'm coming! The witch bent down and opened the oven. The door's not stuck. You couldn't open it because you're too skinny and clumsy. Then she bent over to check the fire. Meanwhile, Gretel staggered backwards and pushed the witch into the furnace with all her might. Hansel, we're finally free! The witch won't come out anytime soon. Dear sister, you're such a smart girl. You managed to save us. We have to get out of here now, Hansel. But first, let's see what's in that room that she keeps locked. When Hansel and Gretel entered the room, they found a chest full of jewels and gold. Let's fill our pockets, Gretel, and take it to our father. After putting some gold in their pockets, they took the witch's map and went home. Once upon a time, in a small house there lived a young married couple. They were a very happy couple and we're expecting a baby. I know it's important for our baby to be healthy, but I do hope we have a daughter, my love. Yes, I would love to have a daughter too. God willing, we'll have a daughter that will look like you. The day of the birth was getting closer, and the young mother excitedly awaited the birth of her baby. Every day, the mother would look out the window and over the high wall <gasps> and admire her neighbor's garden oh. filled with flowers and fruits. One day she noticed a yellow leaf plant that she had never seen before. I wonder what the name of that plant is. It smells wonderful. I'm sure it tastes amazing too. I have to eat that plant. I will go straight to my neighbor and ask her. Without wasting any time, the young mother left the house. But she had no idea that her next door neighbor was a cruel witch. She knocked on the door, unaware of the danger that awaited her. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. The yellow plant in your garden smells amazing. I'm pregnant and really craving for it. Is it an edible plant? Of course. I can give you a little. It tastes incredible and it's really good for humans. Then it'll be good for my baby too. Of course, dear neighbor, especially for expecting mothers.
But remember, because it's so valuable, you may only take one. <laughs> Everything is going just as I planned. The young woman finished mm. eating the piece she had taken as soon as she got home, but she wanted to eat more. Bring me more. If I don't eat it, I can't have this baby. <laughs> don't worry. I'll do everything I can to bring you more of that yellow plant. As night fell and it got dark, the helpless husband climbed over the tall wall and took the plant that his wife wanted. This went on for some time. Every night, the young man secretly entered the garden, but he was uneasy about entering his neighbor's garden without permission. The bad witch had actually grown this plant to set up a trap to them. She knew that her neighbor was expecting a baby and that she would definitely crave for this with its smell. She had her eye on the baby for a long time. She was going to take the baby one way or another. One evening, as the man entered the garden again, the witch caught him red-handed. She now had the appearance of a witch. She was very ugly and was extremely scary looking. The poor man was frightened. Please forgive me. My wife is pregnant and she can't stop eating this plant. I was forced to do this because you said she could only take one. I know this is wrong, but if she doesn't eat it, I'm afraid that my wife will die. I'm in a very tough situation. <laughs> I'll accept your apology only with one condition. You must give me the baby that is to be born. If not, I'll destroy all of you. The man had to accept this condition. When the time of the birth arrived, a beautiful baby girl was born. The witch went to the house immediately. Her name shall be Rapunzel. You shall raise her until she turns one. In exactly one year, I will come and take her from you. The helpless couple accepted. When Rapunzel turned one, the witch came and took the crying baby away from her mother and father and locked up the baby in a tower in the middle of the forest. She was going to raise the baby there. Many years passed. Rapunzel was now a beautiful young girl. As she had never cut her hair, it was several meters long. Her hair was golden blonde. She had deep green eyes. Whenever the witch went to the tower, she would call out to her. My dear blonde haired girl, I'm here. Let your hair down. Rapunzel would throw her long braid down and the witch would climb up to the tower using her hair. Rapunzel thought that the witch was her mother. As she had never seen anyone else other than the witch until now, Rapunzel thought that she and her mother were the only ones in this world. She had a wonderful voice. She sang all day long until nightfall. Her voice echoed across the forest and all the birds would fly to the window to listen to her. Birds were her only friends. One day, a prince was wandering around the forest. When he heard Rapunzel singing, he wondered where this marvelous sound was coming from. As he followed the direction of the sound, he approached the tower and realized the voice was coming from there. I must meet the girl with this amazing voice. I wonder how I can go at this tower. As he desperately walked round and round the tower, he suddenly saw a witch calling to the top of the tower. He hid behind a tree at once and watched. My dear blonde haired girl, I'm here. Let your hair down. Rapunzel let down her braided hair and the witch climbed up to the tower. I found how to go up the tower. Having waited for the witch to leave, the prince now called out to the tower, impersonating the voice of the witch. My girl, please let down your beautiful blonde hair again. I forgot something up there. I'm letting it down right away, mother. 
With one swift move, she let down her hair again. The prince climbed up the tower using her hair and met Rapunzel. It was the first time in her life that the beautiful girl was seeing another person. Ah! Who are you? Why are you here? Where is my mother? There's no need to be afraid. I am the prince of this country. Your wonderful voice brought me here. <gasps> to come up here, I had to impersonate your mother's voice. Oh. Rapunzel, who at first was very frightened, slowly realized that he wasn't a bad person. The prince was already charmed by her beauty. Oh. Days and months passed by. The prince was coming to the tower every day. When they spent time together, they didn't realize how fast the time passed. Then, he finally proposed to Rapunzel. Rapunzel, I want to live with you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? Uh, of course I'll marry you. I must now return to the palace. Hmm. I will try and find a solution to get you out of here at once. Rapunzel was very excited that she would finally see the outside world once she married the prince. She was so bored of living alone in the tower for all those years. He held Rapunzel's hair and headed down the tower. Unfortunately, the witch was there too and saw the prince. She immediately understood what was going on. She raged with anger. As Rapunzel was pulling her hair back up again, the witch held onto it and climbed up. She was so annoyed and furious. What's going on? Who's that just left? I've been hiding you up here to protect you from evil, but you, you've been talking to strangers and making friends with them. He's the prince of this country. He asked for my hand in marriage, and I accepted. I'm so happy, mother. I was waiting for you to come and tell you all about it. What? What nonsense is this? I'll show you. The witch was so angry that with a pair of scissors, she cut Rapunzel's long hair short as can be. And with her magic, she then sent her to a very far away country. When the prince arrived at the tower the next day, he had no idea that the witch was waiting for him in the tower. Hi, Rapunzel. I'm here. Let down your hair, please. The witch let down the long braid that she had cut from Rapunzel's hair. When the prince reached the window of the tower, the witch was there to meet him. He was terrified the moment he saw her. What a surprise, huh? You thought you were going to be able to take my girl away who I've hidden for years? <laughs> As the witch let go of the braid, the terrified prince found himself on the floor. He fell on top of the bushes, but since he hit his head, he was blinded. Rapunzel was ever present in the prince's mind. So mounted on his horse, he searched for her everywhere. He swore that even if he had to go to the end of the world, he would find her. He searched and searched and searched for a very long time. Finally, one day, he heard a song. The voice was familiar to him. This is Rapunzel's voice. I finally found her. Galloping on his horse, he headed straight towards the sweet voice. He came to the door of the house Rapunzel was staying in. Rapunzel, I'm here. Open the door. I can't believe it. Is it really you? As Rapunzel opened the door, she cried when she saw the prince. She cried so much that her tears fell on the prince's face as he was kneeling. Her tears were miraculous, joyful tears. Suddenly, the blind prince opened his eyes. They hugged each other joyfully and celebrated this miracle. The prince was finally able to propose officially. They returned to the palace and started preparing for the wedding. Upon their return, Rapunzel and the prince looked for her real parents so they could share their news. They were incredibly happy to be reunited with their daughter after all these years. They had a beautiful wedding and they all lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, 
In a little house in the forest, there lived three little pigs, Honky, Ponky and Minky. They lived with their mother. Honky was very lazy, Ponky was very carefree and easygoing, and Minky, the smallest one, was smart, forward-thinking and a brave pig. He behaved as if he was the father of the house. Whenever there was a problem, their mother would always resolve it with Minky. The others wouldn't even move a muscle. Despite the fact that these three brothers were so different, they really loved one another. In their spare time, after sleeping and eating, they always played hide and seek in the forest. Honky and Ponky always napped in the spot in which they were hiding and Minky would find them each time, wake them up and then tag them. Minky had no other option than to accept his brothers the way they were. I'm always it. It's not fair. I'm so tired of looking for you. <laughs> oh, let me sleep a little bit more. <laughs> He'll spend all day searching for me. <laughs> Children, don't go too far away whilst playing. You know that the forest is dangerous. It's full of hungry wolves. Honky and Ponky expected their mother to do everything for them. Minky, however, always helped their mother. One day, he took their mother aside. Mum, this can't go on like this any longer. We're the ones who always bring the wood from the forest. You get tired cooking for us every day. I think my brothers and I should leave and we should take care of ourselves. Don't be ridiculous, Minky. You're all my children. I'm used to it all. Of course, Mum. But my brothers should learn to take responsibility. It'll be good for them too. Huh? What do you say? I think you're right, Minky. Then let's talk to your brothers tomorrow and put this idea straight into action. I'd saved all of you a bit of money. I'll split it to three and give it to you all. Everyone should build his or own house. Let's see what happens. Even though Minky's brothers were shocked at their mother's idea, all three little pigs, bags in their hands, set off on the road the next day to start their new lives. They were very excited. They parted with their mother at the door. Mom, I'm so sorry I upset you by being so lazy all the time. See you. Mom, mm. I never listened to anything you told me. I upset you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. From now on, I'll remember everything you've told me. Goodbye. Mom, don't be sad that I'm leaving. After I finish my house, I'm going to come and get you. Take care. Their mother was very concerned that something bad could happen to them in the forest. Take care of yourself, kids. Let me know how you are, and please watch out for treacherous wolves. The three little pigs walked for a while and finally decided on a spot for their new houses. It was quite far away from their home. Minky especially wanted it to be like this. He didn't trust his brothers. He thought that they should really learn to take care of themselves and not run straight to their mother at the first problem they are faced with. It was first Honky that found a spot for his house. Because he was lazy, he was choosing the easiest option. I'll make my house from hay, and once I make my bed from hay too, I'll be nice and warm throughout the winter. I won't have to work so hard. I'll also have some money left because it's cheap and easy to build a house of hay. Honky was nearly the same. I'm going to make my house out of wood. I'll also paint it nicely. This is the best option. If I rent one room out, then I won't even have to work. I think it'll be easy to make a house out of wood. Guys, are you crazy? How can there be a house from hay and wood? You're both picking the easiest options again. If I were you, I would think about it again. You take care of yourself, Tiny. And he's telling us what to do. You short pig, you. Ha 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 ha. The three little pigs were building their houses close to one another. Honky had built his house out of hay in one day. He had even started to fall asleep on his bed of hay. And Ponky built a scrappy house within a day with the wood that he had bought. Oh, he 
even this house is too much for me. As long as I have a roof over my head, I don't care about anything else. Minky was going to make his house out of brick. First, he carried the brick, and then he dug a large base. Then, in the next couple days, he built a wonderful house with four rooms and a fireplace out of brick and cement. I'll carry water and wood for old people and take care of their gardens. I'll go to the market for them. This way I can be of use to everyone. And I'm sure they will give me a plate of food and an allowance. It wasn't long before the dangerous wolf in the forest got the smell of the three little pigs. First, he went to Hunky's door. Neighbour! My sweet neighbour! Welcome! Can I come in so that we can meet? I live nearby! This must be the voice of the wolf that Mother warned us about. As far as I know, there aren't any neighbours around. I know who you are, you horrible wolf! I'm not going to open the door! The wolf got really angry. Get out of there quickly! My breath is incredibly strong. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. No, my house is strong. You cannot destroy it. The wolf took a step back, took a deep breath in, and then he huffed and puffed towards the house with all his might. The house of hay completely fell apart. Honky managed to escape and ran straight to Minky's house. Minky, the wolf came to my door and destroyed my house. And I ran to you. I think he's going to Ponky now. Quick, close the door. Oh no! Let's call him and let him know right away. Hello, Ponky. Get out of the house immediately. The wolf is coming towards you. Hello? Minky, is that you? Ah! Look at what you're fussing over. My house is solid. There's no way he can get in. Indeed, the wolf who hadn't managed to catch Honky was headed straight towards Ponky's house. Yoo-hoo! Anyone home? Little pig, I bought you a small gift from your little brother. Open the door, let me come inside and let's talk a little. He wouldn't have time to send me a gift from his sleep. Either way, my brothers called me to let me know that you were coming. You stupid wolf! I'm not opening the door. Now get out of here. So you're not opening? Okay then. My breath is incredibly strong. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Not wanting to leave empty handed, the treacherous wolf gave the house a couple of kicks. Then after huffing and puffing on the scrappy house, it fell apart. Pinky managed to escape and get to Minky's house. Quick, open the door, Minky. The wolf's going to catch me. Please hurry up. Minky took his second brother into the house too. The three of them were shaking with fear. The three brothers sat down and started thinking. I think it's your turn, Minky. He's coming here for sure. Yes, I think so too. We must find a way to free ourselves from this wolf once and for all. But how? The three pigs quickly made a plan. Gotta make a plan, guys. Good idea. And started to wait for the wolf. Come on. When the wolf arrived at Minky's house, he called out. I know that three of you are there. Come out nicely, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow this house down too. Come on, what are you waiting for? Break it down if you can. Turn around, go, and leave us alone. The furious wolf started kicking the door and the walls. There were three locks on the door, but the three pigs stared at each other with fear and hugged one another tightly as they watched the door. The wolf kicked, huffed, and puffed, but he couldn't destroy Minky's house. Suddenly, an idea popped into the wolf's head. He was going to enter the house through the chimney. He went onto the roof by placing a ladder against the house. He managed to squeeze himself into the chimney and let himself fall. The three pigs were waiting for this moment. Right away, they lit a fire in the fireplace and started to watch. 
since the wolf hadn't seen smoke in the chimney before, he hadn't thought of a fire. Falling quickly and straight down the chimney, he burned himself from the fire. As fast as a jet, he went right back up the chimney in so much pain. Help! Help! I'm on fire! Help! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the wolf's time is over. He'll never come back. Now, it's time to go get our mother. My house is pretty big and there's a room for each of us. I've missed her very much, haven't you? Have I? I won't be lazy ever again. I'll sort out of the shopping from now on. I missed her too. And I will do the gardening from now on. I'm going to grow fruits and vegetables and help our mother. Yes, all of us must help Mum by doing some of the housework and make her comfortable. We can also help some of our neighbours, too. Thus, Honky and Ponky changed a lot. Everyone started to look up to Clever Minky. With this wonderful ending, they took their mother in with them and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, Snow White and the Prince lived happily married. I just wanted to get rid of Snow White, but I got banished from the palace instead. I'll make her pay for this. Of course, my queen. She can't get away with this. Let me see what she's up to. It looks like she's taking a walk alone. And she's outside the palace. I tell you, this is my chance. The witch immediately drank some potion and... Ha 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 That's it! I'm coming for you, young lady. There you go. You are so cute. The old lady caught Snow White by surprise as she suddenly appeared before her. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Oh, darling, I'm coming from the market and these bags are really heavy. I live close by. Could you help me? Sure. Let me carry your bags. So they started walking together to the old lady's house. Here we are. Let me open the door. Come on in. Leave the bags there, will you? Do you live in this empty house? You shouldn't be concerned about that. <laughs> Nighty night, Snow White. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <coughs> After making her fall asleep, the witch took Snow White to her own castle. Then she started preparing a potion. Now I will prepare an amazing potion for our princess. What's this potion for, my queen? It turns people into hideous beings. Once Snow White drinks this potion, she will be the ugliest princess of all time. Oh my! I thought she'll give this potion to the poor girl. This glass is for Snow White. <laughs> And this one's for me, my favorite raspberry syrup. Mmm. I'll raise my glass to celebrate my victory once the princess becomes ugly. <laughs> and I'll happily watch you do that, my queen. Long live the queen, long live the queen. What, what happened to me? What, where am I? You're at the witch's house. She's the one who locked you down here. Oh, so that old lady was the witch. 
She's planning something terrible. She has a potion that will make you ugly. I can't believe it. How do you know this? She was speaking to her mirror while preparing the potion. I saw and heard everything. I can't drink that potion. Don't worry. I'll help you. I have a plan. So what are you going to do? What's the plan? Listen to me carefully. The squirrel went to the kitchen downstairs. What's all the commotion? What's happening? The witch went downstairs to find out what was happening. Ugh, how did this happen? My pants! In the meantime, the squirrel sneaked into the room where the potion was. Princess! Princess! I got it! Now you can safely drink the potion she'll give you! Are you sure? Yes, don't worry! You'll be drinking a delicious raspberry syrup! Take these crayons and some mud with you and remember the plan, okay? Okay. As if I don't have better things to do? The witch grabbed the glass with the potion. Little did she know that the squirrel had swapped the glasses and it was the raspberry syrup instead. Well, well, it's time for our beautiful princess to get ugly. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Let me go, please. What do you want from me? Do as I say and you'll be back home in no time. Drink this syrup now, you'll feel better. And what if I don't? Then you'll stay here forever! Yes, that's a good girl. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? My queen, I'm afraid Snow White is still the most beautiful girl. <laughs> Do you mean Snow White? Who'll turn into the ugliest princess alive when the sun goes down? <laughs> Ew! What happened to you? You're hideous! You tricked me! My face! What have you done to my face? From now on, you'll be the ugliest princess in the world! Now you can go back to your palace. <laughs> you're an evil, cruel witch. Let's see if your beloved prince will still love you. <laughs> After Snow White left, the witch went into her room and stood before the mirror. Now it's time for me to drink my raspberry syrup and celebrate my victory. Let's see. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me now who is the fairest of them all. <laughs> Well, mm, uh, it's Snow White, my queen. But uh, how could this be? On the other hand, my queen, if you must know, you are the ugliest being in the world. You impertinent mirror. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, no! For a second, I didn't even recognize you, Snow White. <laughs> but the witch wasn't as lucky as you. She'll be ugly forever. She deserves it, though. I'm so grateful for all your help, Squirrel. Thanks to you. We taught the witch a lesson. I'll never forget you. Mwah. Goodbye, Snow White. 
Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Clara that lived with her mother. Clara only had one dress and one pair of shoes because they were poor. Her shoes were a size too small. One day, Clara and her mum went for a walk in the countryside. Mommy, mothers give birth to children, but where do the flowers come from? Clara, when the people we love leave this world, they turn into flowers. That's why flowers smell good to remind us of the people we love. Don't pick them, just smell them. What a beautiful story, Mom. You smell like a flower, too. The next day, Clara went out to play. She found a beautiful pair of red shoes next to the trash can. She took them and ran home. Mom, look what I found. They are beautiful, aren't they? Clara, put those shoes back where you find them. They are not yours. But whoever owned them left them next to a trash can. I don't think it's a good idea to keep them. There is something odd about those shoes. Now, go back and leave them where you found them. Clara was sad, so she brought the shoes back to where she had found them. The next day, Clara's mother turned into a beautiful flower. Clara was later adopted by an old woman. The old woman was kind and loved Clara very much. Years passed and Clara grew up to be a beautiful young lady. However, she was stubborn and disobedient. Clara, I prepared broccoli soup for you. Come on, let's eat. No, I don't want to eat. Taste it, please. I'm sure you'll like it. No, no, no! Oh, Clara, don't be so difficult. Mother, my shoes are too small and my feet hurt. We should buy new ones. All right, Clara. Let's go shopping and buy you a new pair of shoes. They went shopping. Clara was mesmerized by the red shoes she saw on display. They were almost identical to the ones that her mum didn't allow her to keep years earlier. I want these! Let's get these! Clara, we can buy only one pair of shoes. Red doesn't match all your clothes. Let's buy black ones instead. No, no, I want red shoes. I don't want any other. Buy the red shoes or I'll walk barefoot all the time. You are stubborn indeed. Well then, let's go get them. Clara left the store wearing her new red shoes. She 
she was so happy on her way home that she started dancing joyfully. Dear Clara, you got the red shoes. But what are you going to wear tomorrow at Mr. Peter's funeral? I'm going to wear this pair. Nobody will notice, don't worry. of my red shoes. Mother, I'll dance my way home. Clara, wait for me. I can't reach you. Going away. You all envy me, so I'll keep dancing. I, I can't stop myself. What's going on? Help me! Help! Clara couldn't remove the shoes and kept dancing. The shoes had a mind of their own and guided where she would go. She continued dancing for three days and three nights. She was far away from home and her feet were bruised. She was hungry and thirsty. I wish I hadn't been so stubborn or disobeyed mother. I promise I won't ever be defiant ever. Red shoes, stop. Please, I've learned my lesson. Suddenly, the red shoes stopped and Clara stopped dancing. Get off my feet now! Clara walked home through the forests and rivers with her injured feet. Until she finally reached home. Clara, daughter, I was worried sick. Fortunately, you're back home safe and sound. I'm so tired and very hungry. I want to eat and go to bed. There is broccoli soup, but you don't like it. Let me prepare something else right away. That's okay. I'll eat the soup. I promised myself that I would no longer be stubborn. This is how I was able to get rid of the red dancing shoes. Oh, Clara, I'm so happy to hear that. More stubbornness, I promise, Mother. Once upon a time, in a very cold country, there lived two little children who were neighbors. They were very good friends. The girl's name was Gerda, and the boy was called Kai. They played together all the time. Every night, Gerda's grandmother would gather them in front of the fireplace and tell them stories. That night, Grandma was telling them the story about the Snow Queen. Kids, the Snow Queen was a very beautiful girl with deep green eyes. But she was also just as evil. She would use sleighs to trick the children, capture them and then turn them into ice sculptures. Like her hair, her heart was also made of ice. Grandma, that's so scary. What if she comes to our house? We need to protect ourselves from her. Kids, this is actually a true story. Please don't ever get on the sleighs of strangers. If you do, Bad things may happen to you. The next day, Kai and Gerda went out for some sled racing across the snow-covered countryside. 
Kai was still in the effect of Grandma's story. Gerda, when I went to bed last night, I thought of something. I wonder if the Snow Queen can be melted. If we can get her near the fireplace, maybe we can melt her. This way the spell she casted on all those frozen children will be broken and they'll be set free. Kai, please lower your voice. Maybe she can hear us and we'll get very angry. We must be careful. I will melt the Snow Queen. <laughs> in fact, the Snow Queen could hear even a whisper from anywhere in the country. After hearing Kai laughing and making fun of her, the Snow Queen decided that she would bring Kai to her palace and turn him into an ice sculpture forever. She immediately sent a beautiful reindeer-drawn sleigh to where the children were. Oh my god, what a beautiful sleigh this is! Do you think we should hop on and try it, Garda? According to the story, the Snow Queen also has a sleigh, but this can't be it! Look how beautiful this is! It's covered in silver and so shiny! <gasps> no, Kai, don't get on. Remember what Grandma said? She warned us not to get on any stranger's sleigh. It's so beautiful! I'll ride it just for a little and then get off right away. As soon as Kai got on the sleigh, the reindeers took off right up in the air. Within seconds, they were out of sight. The Snow Queen was having him taken to her castle. Kai was very scared and regretful for not listening to Gerda. But it was too late. Months passed and they didn't hear from Kai at all. <laughs> Gerda was very sad and was crying all the time. She kept waiting for her dear friend. Her best friend was lost, but she was certain that the Snow Queen had captured him. Seasons passed, the snow melted, and summer arrived. Gerda was worried sick, so she finally went to talk to her grandmother. Grandma, I'm going off to search for Kai. I'm so worried about him and I've missed him so much. Please, let me go. On one condition, Gerda. I trust you a lot and you are a brave girl, but I have a magic mirror and I want you to take it with you. What good is this mirror to me, Grandma? When you come face to face with the Snow Queen, make her look into this mirror. Only then you will see its use. Gerda placed the mirror in her bag and left. While going through the forest, she came across a small cottage. She knocked on the door because she was tired and wanted to rest a little. A sweet old lady opened the door. Actually, she was a sorcerer who always did good spells. Come in, pretty girl. We were waiting for you. I know why you're here and I'm going to help you. You're searching for your best friend, Kai. My cat, Cotton, will tell you where he is. Really? Thank you so much. Gerda immediately went next to Cotton, who was lying on a pillow by the fireplace. Dear Cotton, how can I friend my friend, Kai? Meow. There's a little girl in the cottage at the end of the forest. She told me to send you there as soon as you arrived. She knows where your friend is. Meow. Gerda thanked them and left. She walked and walked, and when she reached the cottage at the end of the forest, night had already fallen. A little girl met her before she came and knocked on the door. Welcome, Gerda. I was expecting you. Please sit by the fire and have something to eat. I'm really tired and hungry. Thank you so much. After you eat, get some rest. Tomorrow I will send you to the Snow Queen's palace. Don't worry. In the morning, they went to the barn in the back where there were two beautiful reindeers. The little girl could talk to the reindeers. She whispered to their ears to take Gerda to the Snow Queen's palace. Right away, they prepared a beautiful sleigh. I don't know how to thank you for helping me. 
Have a nice trip. Don't be scared. My reindeers will take you to the palace and you will find your friend Kai. Take these with you. Gerda set off on the road with the reindeers pulling on the sleigh. They travelled for several days. Everywhere was covered with white snow. Thankfully, the little girl had given Gerda a thick coat, a hat and a warm blanket. I'm covered with a warm blanket while traveling on a sleigh. I'd be so happy if I could do this with Kai. Hopefully we can do it on our way back. After journeying for days, they finally arrived in front of a shimmering white castle. Gerda realized that they had arrived at the Snow Queen's castle. My dear reindeers, wait for me here. I'm going to go get my friend and come right back. She went right into the castle. Everything was made of ice and was covered with icicles. She wandered around the entire castle, but there was absolutely no one around. Kai! Kai! Where are you? Kai! I can't find you! Her voice was echoing in the empty castle when she finally opened the door of a room on the top floor. Suddenly, she saw Kai. He was standing like a statue in the middle of the room. Kai! Kai! Wake up! Talk to me! I I've missed you so much, my dear friend. I've finally found you! She was crying and rubbing all over and trying to melt the ice. She cried and cried so much that her tears started melting the ice around Kai. Suddenly, Kai came alive and started talking. Gerda! I know you would come for me. I also missed you and I'm so happy to see you. We'll talk about everything later, Kai. Let's get out of here right away. Right then, the Snow Queen returned to the castle and walked into the room where they were standing. She was terrifying. Gerda was seeing her for the first time. With her long white hair and deep green eyes, the Snow Queen was a beautiful woman. The Snow Queen started to shout with anger. How dare you, entering my castle without permission and melting my sculpture. Now it's your turn. You asked for it. You will also be one of my sculptures. <laughs> Gerda was terrified, but she knew that she had to stand up against the Snow Queen. Suddenly, she remembered the mirror that her grandmother had given her. I've never seen anyone quite as beautiful as you, but unfortunately, your heart is not as beautiful. I feel sorry for you. You can turn me into an eye sculpture if you wish, but my grandmother sent you a mirror. Can you look at it once? Give me that mirror. Why did she send this to me? The Snow Queen took the mirror in her hands and was shocked because the reflection in the mirror was of her as a child. She was a pretty little girl with long blonde hair and deep green eyes. Oh my God, what's happening? At that moment, a cloud of dust surrounded the queen. Getting smaller and smaller, she turned into a small beautiful girl. A miracle had taken place. The mirror was in fact magical. Those who looked into it would see their true selves. It seemed that the Snow Queen had been very sad as a child because no one had played with her. One day, a sorcerer said to the Snow Queen, you have to punish them, and asked if she wanted to seek revenge on those who didn't play with her. Filled with sadness as a child, she had made the wrong decision and had said yes. The sorceress turned her into the Snow Queen and filled her heart with evil. Since the mirror had broken the terrible curse, everyone was now filled with joy. Thank you so much. I'm saved now. My heart is filled with kindness once again. Kai and Gerda went to the reindeers that awaited them, journeyed back the way they had come and returned to their old happy days. And of course, to their grandmother's stories. Once upon a time, there lived a family who had a daughter named Cinderella. They were a very happy family. However, once their kind-hearted mother suddenly passed away, 
their happiness came to an end. Cinderella's father married another woman soon after. The woman had two spoiled and spiteful daughters. They were just as unkind as their mother. They all came to live in the house. Cinderella now had two stepsisters and a stepmother. Everyone loved Cinderella, who was incredibly kind and beautiful. She had long blonde hair, ocean blue coloured eyes and delicate feet and hands. She was a girl who enjoyed helping everyone around her, cooked delicious meals, loved plants and protected animals. Out of jealousy, the stepsisters made sure to make Cinderella's life miserable. They made her do all the housework and used her as the housemaid. Her only friend was a tabby cat. When she finished her chores, she would take her cat on her lap sit by the fireplace and tell him about her misfortune. She always told him how much she missed her mother. That's why Cinderella was nicknamed Cindercat. Unfortunately, soon after, her father died too. The stepsisters and stepmother gave Cinderella a room in the attic. You can't stay on the same floor as us. You're better suited up there. Please, let me and my cat get warmed up by the fireplace. Only after we go to bed. The ashes of the fireplace should be enough for you. Your clothes are ripped and torn. We don't want to see you around. Poor Cinderella accepted her fate. Every night she would sit next to the fireplace and try to warm herself with the cinders left in it. One day, a soldier stopped by their home to invite all girls who were of age to marry to a ball at the palace. Our king is to leave his throne to his son. The only condition is for him to marry a suitable girl. How many girls are there in this house who are of age? Joyously, the mother presented her own two daughters. I have two beautiful girls. Then who is that girl that I see in the kitchen wiping the floors? She's a housemate. How could we bring her to the palace? It doesn't matter. I must write her name down as well. Even if you write her name down, it won't matter. She has no clothes or shoes to wear. Go ahead, write it down. <laughs> Cinderella begged her stepmother. Please. Give me one of my sister's dresses, so I can come too. No, you will not go. You will clean the floors until we come back. Do you think the prince will choose you over my daughters, the Cinder Cat? The three of them mocked Cinderella and chased her away. Finally, the day of the ball arrived. Ooh. All dressed up, they went to the ball and left Cinderella behind. Cinderella cried hopelessly. Right at that moment, a glowing fairy appeared before Cinderella. Don't worry, I'll get you to the ball. Who are you? I'm the good fairy who helps kind-hearted girls. Your mother has sent me here to help you. She is watching over you from above. Let's get to it. Find me a large pumpkin and six mice. Cinderella did what the fairy asked of her right away. She brought the pumpkin and the mice in her room, who were already her friends, came running to help. With the wand in her hand, the fairy turned the pumpkin into a fantastic carriage. Four mice into white horses, one mouse into a coachman, and one into a footman. Finally, it was Cinderella's turn. The fairy touched her head with her wand and turned her into a wonderful princess. 
Remember, don't stay past midnight. The spell will break after 12 o'clock. You must leave the ball before 12. Good luck. Cinderella got in the carriage and went straight to the palace. As soon as she entered the ballroom, everyone stared at her and held their breath. They were curious to learn who she was. She must be a princess from another country. They asked themselves who else would arrive in such a magnificent carriage and wear exquisite jewels. The prince, who saw Cinderella, came up to her immediately. <laughs> My lady, will you dance with me? With pleasure, His Royal Highness. It was love at first sight. The prince danced with Cinderella all night. The king and queen also really liked Cinderella. This girl would suit us and our palace as well. She is noble and beautiful. We have found our bride. All the other girls at the ball, including the stepmother and stepsisters, were huffing and puffing with jealousy. Where do you come from? Where do you live? What's your name? Time passed by really quickly. Cinderella, who saw that it was almost 12 o'clock, left the prince unexpectedly and ran out of the palace. As she hurried down the palace stairs, she lost one of her glass shoes. But because she was in such a hurry, she left it behind, got in the carriage and went home. At exactly midnight, everything turned into what it was before. The prince who had run after Cinderella was in complete shock. He hadn't been able to catch up to her, but he found her glass shoe on the stairs. When Cinderella came home, she was surprised at what she saw. The house was sparkling clean. There was even a hot soup brewing on the stove. The fairy had sorted this out too. When Cinderella went to her room, she was very sad. But what now? I'll never be able to see the prince again. Don't worry. Everything will be okay. Meanwhile, the prince thought only about the beautiful girl who had run away from the ball. I must find her. I will take no other as my queen. Tomorrow we will try this shoe on every girl's foot that attended the ball last night and across the city. If the shoe fits someone, then that girl will be my queen. The next day, soldiers walked door to door and asked all the girls who had attended the ball to try on the glass shoe. Everyone wore the shoe with excitement, but it didn't fit anyone. Finally, it was time for Cinderella's home. Everyone was incredibly excited. The stepsisters spent hours massaging and creaming their feet in order to shorten them. And they locked Cinderella in the attic. Yet, the shoe didn't fit either of the sisters' feet. Just as the soldiers were about to leave, they heard a sound from upstairs. Oh. Cinderella had managed to catch their attention by knocking down a cupboard. What's that sound? Who's upstairs? The house cat. There's no one. No cat can make such a noise. Don't lie. Let's go upstairs and have a look. Immediately. Huh? <gasps> they got Cinderella out of the locked room and asked her to try on the glass shoe. Oh. The shoe fit perfectly. Cinderella showed them the other pair. The soldiers knew that they had found the princess and ran to the palace to deliver the good news. The prince joyously arrived at Cinderella's house and recognized her right away. Will you marry me and be my princess? <laughs> Having received the answer as yes, 
He took her to the palace. Everything Cinderella told like him about told everything that had happened to her. Everything was fine. They got so married with a wedding lasting 40 days and 40 nights. The first thing Cinderella did was to have her tabby cat brought to the palace. They lived happily ever after. And the good fairy looked over them at all times. Stylish! Stylish! Help! Wolf is running in the forest in a panicky way. Stylish! Ouch! Ouch! What's the matter, Wolf? Uh, um, I apples, uh, trees. <laughs> I don't understand, Wolf. What happened? Come, come with me. Wolf grabbed Stylish by the arm and led her to the apple orchard because he was so panicked that he couldn't utter the words. Oh no! See? I'm talking about this! It turns out that there wasn't one single apple in the apple orchard. What happened to the apples? I don't know, but what if this is just the beginning? What if first the apples, then the bananas, and, and then the eggs disappear? My eggs! I can live without my eggs! Stop it, Wolf! Stay calm! Let's figure out what happened. Stylish and Wolf walked through the fruit garden. They asked everyone they came across. But nobody knew anything until... Wolf! Stylish! Help me! Who are you? Have you met? Princess! 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 With these clothes! Shh! Wolf, don't you see? She's Snow White! Stylish, I need your help! Sure, what happened, princess? The evil queen stole all my clothes. Whenever I tried to get clothes, she hurled stones from the tower. She gathered all the apples using magic. Now she throws apples. Wow, the evil queen is really wicked. That means she stole our apples. What can we do? Help me recover my clothes. Then I'll prove to my dad that she's a bad queen. Can you help me? Okay, I'm in. I... Uh, I have some work to do, um, which stuff? <laughs> Come on, Wolf. Something will happen to me again, but uh, okay, okay. Snow White, Stylish and Wolf made their way to the castle, just as Snow White had said. The Queen was waiting in the tower and the guards guarded her belongings. Let me go first. Okay, okay, we are behind you. A stone is heading your way. More right, be careful. Now left, an apple is coming. Apple? Ah, oh, I got it. Stylish picked up a few apples while avoiding the stones and finally got close enough to the guards. Excuse me, can I get back Snow White's clothes? No, I can't do that. Those are the Queen's orders. But they are Snow White. I'm sorry. What if I give you three apples? You know what? We're hungry. The Queen hasn't fed us in days. Okay then, I'll give you these apples if you give me the clothes. For three apples? I can only give you one pair of pants. Hmm, all right. I'm going to go gather more apples. Stylish took the pants and went back to Snow White and explained what had happened. So all we need to do is pick more apples? Uh, I can do that. Come on then. Wolf, Snow White and Stylish tried to approach the tower together. But it was harder than it seemed. Picking apples while avoiding stones was exhausting. To the right, Snow White! Ah, oh, be careful! Wolf, look behind! Oh, uh, it, it, it almost hit my head! Oh, ouch! Mom! I got an apple! Me too! Mommy! One more apple! I'm taking these to 
the guard. I suppose he'll give us a t-shirt for two apples. Oh! Why do all the stones come in my direction? Pastor Wolf, four, five, six, seven. I can get my summer dress with seven apples. Mommy! Ah, I got an apple. Ah, no, this is a stone too. Princess, I got a t-shirt. Okay, now I'm going to get my dress. Wolf, be careful, on the left. Ouch! It was coming straight for my tail! My beautiful tail! Come on, focus! You haven't caught an apple yet! Stylish! Do you think Snow White will give us a few apples after collecting all the clothes? I don't know, Wolf. We collect the apples to take the clothes back. Maybe there will be no apples left. Lots of apples! One apple! Uh, uh, two apples! Whee! Ooh, what are those lights? The evil queen is casting a spell, stylish. Don't let her put you under her spell. Oh, I'm stunned! What is that? Grok! Grok! Ugh! She turned Wolf into a frog! Don't worry, he will return to normal in 3 to 5 seconds. Wolf! Oh, Mommy! What was that? Suddenly, I felt like eating flies! Ugh, disgusting! Snow White, Wolf and Stylish spent all day picking up apples and avoiding the evil queen's spells and stones. Then, piece by piece, they took back Snow White's clothes. Thank you very much, friends. I couldn't have done it without you. Now, you look like a real princess. And you don't look like a frog anymore. Oh, <laughs> she kissed me. Thank you so much for everything. I wish I could return the favor. Hey, in fact, Wolf has been craving apples all day. Are there any apples left that he can have? Apples? But we gave all the apples to the guards. Hey, I have a better idea. Let's go to the palace. To the palace? To the, to the palace? N n now? But, but, but my outfit is not suitable. Never mind that, Wolf. It doesn't matter. Think about the delicious food we'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, in the deep sea, there was an underwater kingdom. The king watched over the kingdom along with his six beautiful daughters and his elderly mother. All the sea creatures lived peacefully and happily together. All six daughters of the king were beautiful. But the most beautiful one was the little mermaid. She had long red hair and ocean blue eyes. Their father would gather them around his throne every night and they would chat while sipping their seaweed tea. The king's greatest fear was that his girls would fall under the spell of the sun and choose to live above water. Because when a mermaid turned 18, she was allowed to swim to the surface and watch the world while enjoying the sun and the wind. My dear girls, according to the rules of our sea kingdom, it is forbidden to talk to humans. Their lives aren't like ours. We belong to the sea, and they belong to the land and air. Don't ever go near them. 
But father, even if they're different from us, I'm really curious about humans and want to see them. Of course, my little girl. You're almost 18. By listening to my word and without breaking the rules, one day you two will be able to go to the surface and watch the world while enjoying the sun and the wind. The little mermaid sisters would always tell her about everything they saw when they came back from the surface. You know what, little sis? There's a wonderful breeze up there. The sun is really warm. As huge ships pass by, we play with dolphins and we sunbathe on the rocks without letting anyone see us. There was nothing the little mermaid could do but to daydream and wait for her 18th birthday. I'm so excited, sis. I know I have to wait. In the meantime, I spend my time playing with Yum Yum and make pearl necklaces. Of course, for myself and you. <laughs> Yum Yum was a dolphin and was the little mermaid's best friend. At times, they would leave the palace to play tag at the bottom of the ocean. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. <laughs> yum yum, come find me. Yum yum, bet you can't find me. Come here. D stop! Don't swim too fast! I'm going to catch you! Come here! Don't run! Don't run! I'm gonna catch you! You need to swim faster! I don't get it. Are you a turtle or a dolphin? <laughs> Am I a mermaid? No one can swim as fast as you. Come on! Let's have a swimming race! Why do I even bother when I know I'm going to lose? <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> Don't say that, Yum Yum. Maybe you'll win one day. Never mind, let's race another time. Can you bring me back some more pearls? I want to make necklaces and bracelets for my sisters. While waiting for Yum Yum on her oyster bed, the little mermaid's grandmother arrived. Grandma! Can I ask you something? Do humans look like us? No, they don't, my dear granddaughter. Humans have legs, and they use them to walk on land. If they don't know how to swim, they can drown in the sea. We also live longer than they do, and we can also live on land. Don't forget, my dear, when the day comes and you go to the surface, make sure no one hears your voice. Because one of our most important features of our voice is that it's magical. So I won't be able to sing at the surface? What's the harm in it being magical? Those who hear your voice won't be able to leave. Their ears won't hear anything but your voice. They will wait until they see you. Come on. It's very late, and that's enough information for now. Good night, my dear. Finally, the big day had arrived. It was the Little Mermaid's 18th birthday. Happy birthday, my little girl. Happy birthday, little sis. The whole family took her amongst them, celebrating her birthday. The Little Mermaid was so excited. She was going to go to the surface and see the world. She hugged her father goodbye and started swimming with Yum Yum towards the surface. Her father was shouting after her in concern. Don't forget everything I've told you. Yum Yum, look after my daughter. Are you sure, father? I'll be looking after Yum Yum. Because I'm faster than him. <laughs> Goodness, she didn't wait for me again. Finally, the little mermaid reached the surface of the sea. 
She was now sitting on a rock in the middle of the sea and watching the world and was admired of what she saw. My goodness, the sky is so blue. The wind feels so wonderful. The seagulls are such beautiful creatures. Everything's so new to me. They're even more beautiful than my dreams. Be careful, my princess. A ship is about to pass by. They're not supposed to see you. Uh, what's that? It's so huge. People can't swim in the water for long and can't breathe underwater. When they swim, they swim slowly. Even the fastest of them can't keep up with a ship. That's why people have been using ships since ancient times both to travel and to carry loads. And who's the one watching the sea in front of the ship? I think this is a ship from the kingdom above, and that must be the prince of that kingdom. Be very careful. He's looking this way. Suddenly, the little mermaid felt like singing. With her magical, wonderful voice, she started singing. Princess, what are you doing? I hope the prince doesn't hear you singing. If not, he'll never leave until he finds us. Do you know that? But the little mermaid couldn't help herself, and she kept on singing. She couldn't help herself from the prince's charm. The prince was also enthralled by the voice of the little mermaid. What a wonderful voice. The girl who's singing must be just as beautiful. Point the ship towards the rocks. The voice is coming from over there. But, my prince, it's very dangerous to say the ship towards the rocks. It might hit the rocks and get damaged. The weather's also turning, and there might be a storm any minute now. Are you sure? I need to find that girl. Do whatever it takes. Yes, your majesty. Head towards the rocks. May God protect us. The little mermaid hid behind the rocks. The prince didn't see her, but saw the pearl bracelet that she had dropped while escaping. He shouted out to his men. Go on to land and bring me that pearl bracelet. She was a beautiful mermaid, I'm sure. As he was looking at the pearl bracelet in his hands, suddenly a terrible storm began. The sea blackened, thunder struck, and the huge waves caused the ship to hit the rocks and shatter. and the prince fell into the sea. Uh, uh, help yum, yum, the prince fell into the sea. Hurry, uh. we need to save him. The little mermaid and Yum Yum dived into the sea and saved the prince, taking him to the shore. Please open your eyes. I saved you. Please. Please. <laughs> As they waited for the prince to awake, he slowly opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was the little mermaid's beautiful ocean blue eyes. You saved my life. Thank you. Then he saw the pearl necklace around her neck and immediately realized that she was the mermaid on the rock that he heard the voice of and was enthralled by and the owner of the pearl bracelet in his pocket. With joy. What a wonderful miracle. I searched for you all over. And now I owe you my life. Right at that moment, soldiers running to the shore saw the prince and the little mermaid. The little mermaid quickly jumped back into the sea and Yum Yum followed. The soldiers immediately took the prince to the palace and told the king everything that had happened. Every day, for hours, the prince watched the sea from his balcony, wondering if the little mermaid would come back again. 
the little mermaid who returned underwater was so unhappy that she stopped eating and drinking. She shared her secret with Yum Yum, her best friend. Yum Yum, please go to the beach and bring me news from the prince. The prince watches the sea from his balcony every day. And I think he's waiting for you to go to the shore. We must do something. But what? The king was very furious when he saw his daughter like this, but was also very sad. My dear, you have broken the rules of the sea. You were not supposed to get close to any humans. You should have listened to your elders. What's happened to you? But father, aren't you the one who said that we must act kind to all creatures? If we hadn't saved the prince, he would have died. Yes, you are right. But, according to the laws, you shouldn't have approached anyone. You are grounded. The king grounded the little mermaid, forbidding her to go to the surface. The little mermaid was very sad and couldn't stop thinking about the prince. One day, Yum Yum came to the little mermaid. Well, um, I actually know an octopus and he knows a witch who can make miracles. If you want, we can go and tell her about our problem and maybe she's able to help us. What do you say, huh? Then let's go right away. I was grounded for one month and it ends today. I can go to the surface again. They quickly swam together and went to the witch's cave. It was a dreadful place filled with snakes, scorpions and spiders that could live underwater. The witch wasn't so different from them. She had an ugly face and a terrifying voice. She met them at the entrance of the cave. I know you, little mermaid. Tell me, what do you want from me? I should have two legs just like humans. I must go to the surface. I want to find the prince and walk and dance with him on the beach. What you ask of me is very easy. I can give you two legs and two feet like humans, but you must give me something in return. Do you agree? I agree. I'll give you whatever you want, as long as I can walk and dance with the prince on the beach. Finally, the opportunity the witch had been waiting for had arrived at her doorstep. She had never liked her voice and always wanted to change it. Since you've agreed, you must give me your voice in return. Okay, okay. Please give me two feet right away. I must go at once. I'm going to give you a potion. You can drink it when you go to the surface. Your feet will grow right away. But this spell will be broken in three days. If the prince doesn't propose to you within three days, you will turn into a mermaid again. But we'll never have your voice again. <laughs> the little mermaid and Yum Yum grabbed the potion and went straight to the surface. The little mermaid drank the potion and suddenly she had two legs and two feet. and she started to wait for the prince to arrive. At that moment, the prince went out to the balcony. The minute he saw the red-haired girl, he ran to the beach. Hi, I'm the prince of this country. You look like that mermaid I've been looking for. But you have feet. You can't be her. So who are you? The poor mermaid opened her mouth to explain what had happened but she had indeed lost her voice. She was so sad. The prince, seeing her in such a desperate state, felt sorry for her and took her to the palace. How strange. Same blue eyes, same red hair, and the same pearl necklace. 
but you're not a mermaid and can't talk. To whom does this pearl bracelet belong? Meanwhile, the prince's father had found a princess for the prince to marry and was pressuring him. The poor mermaid, frightened and sad, was waiting for the marriage proposal from the prince. What if he never understands that I'm the mermaid he's been looking for? What if he never recognizes me? I'll be turned back into a mermaid again. A mermaid that can't talk or sing. My games with Yum Yum will also just be a dream. The third and last day of the spell had come. The little mermaid went to the beach and was crying as she watched the sea. But Yum Yum didn't wait around. He had already went underwater and told the king everything that had happened. In anger, the king along with his whale soldiers went straight to the witch's cave. If you don't give my daughter's voice back immediately, I'll imprison you in a whale's stomach for the rest of your life. But we had a deal. As your king, I command you. Give my daughter her voice back immediately. The witch, with fear, agreed and opened a glass bottle. And the little mermaid's voice was set free. Suddenly, the princess's magical, beautiful voice spread all throughout the sea. The little mermaid, who was crying on the beach, suddenly heard her own voice coming from the sea. Oh my god! This is my voice! I can talk now! Then she saw her whole family sitting on a rock, waving and blowing kisses at her. The little mermaid was now a girl with an amazing voice and with feet. The king called out to her from the rocks. Love is sometimes more important than all the rules, my dear. Go run to the prince and introduce yourself and be happy from now on, as your family will often come here to see you. The little mermaid ran to the palace excitedly. She told the prince everything. The prince, having found the mermaid he had been searching for, proposed to her right away and placed the pearl bracelet on her hand. The prince and the little mermaid got married and the little mermaid was now the princess of the land too. Every morning, when the little mermaid woke up, she would call out to her family in the sea from the palace balcony and say thank you for everything and wave to them. The prince and little mermaid princess lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in the middle of a lush forest, there lived Mother Goat and her seven little goats. One of the little goats woke up early in the morning and looked outside the window. She was surprised to see it was snowing. She started jumping around and shouted excitedly. Her siblings jumped out of bed and rushed to the window. Yes! Yes! It's snowing! Hooray! Wow! Mother Goat, who heard her kids' excited shouts, came into the room. I have good news for you! This afternoon, the biggest pine tree at the town square will be decorated for New Year's! Yay! But, Mom, that's a giant tree! Aw, it'll take hours to decorate. Yes, you're right. 
That's why the townspeople will be there helping. I love New Year's Day. Hooray! The little goats and their mother wore their coats, gloves, and berets, and went outside. They enjoyed watching the snow falling. Let's make a snowman when we get to the square. Let's have a snowball fight too. Yes, that'll be fun. They got on their sleds and slid through the town square. The last little goat couldn't find his sled in the house. Mom, I can't find my sled. Mom, where are you? Where are you all? My gosh, they left me behind. I have to find my sled immediately. Suddenly, he saw two long ears in front of the window. Oh, I see Wicked Wolf. I have to be careful. <laughs> These wretched goats, they left the windows open, so I'll take all the food from their kitchen and prepare myself a feast for New Year. <laughs> This wicked wolf won't steal our food. I'll show him. The little goat ran to the kitchen. Grabbed the bottle of cooking oil and hot pepper and poured them under the window. The wicked wolf entered through the window and stepped on the oil. He slipped and fell. Ah, ah, help! I'm burning! Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I got you! I'll throw you! Just wait until my tongue gets better! No, 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 no! Mmm! He thinks I'm entering through the window, but I'll surprise him. This time I'm going in through the front door. <laughs> this wicked wolf will probably try to enter through the door. I'll set a trap there too. The little goat put a bucket of ice cold water over the door, attached a string to it, and hid behind the clock. Now you'll see, you wicked wolf. <laughs> that miserable little goat is in for a big surprise when he sees all the food is gone. <laughs> the wicked wolf opened the door and entered quietly. At that moment, the bucket filled with ice water fell over him. You're trying in vain. You will never enter this house. The frozen wolf hit the tree and got very angry. This time I'm going to use a different entrance. One that he won't imagine. <laughs> I'm sure the wicked wolf hasn't given up and he'll try entering down the chimney, but I am ahead of him. The little goat gathered all the needles he found in the house and put them in the fireplace. Then he covered them. This time, I'm going to get that mean little goat. Hmm, <laughs> can I fit in this chimney? My ears are kind of big for the hole, but I'll make them fit, no doubt. Uh, it's too dark in here. 
My ear hurts too, but I'll get a lot of food. The little goat heard the rattling from the chimney, so he knew the wolf was coming down. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other six little goats and their mother had arrived at the town square and were amazed when they saw the lit up giant tree. They were serving scones, chocolate cake and hot milk at the tables around. Everybody started decorating the tree and hanging the ornaments. The little goats hung their ornaments in the higher branches by climbing on each other's shoulders. Make a wish when you hang your ornaments! Hurry up! Hang your ornament! I will make a wish as I hang mine too! The little goat on the top looked down and noticed one sibling was missing. Wait! We're only six! What? We left our brother at home! The wolf was finally able to come down the chimney. But, before he put his feet on the ground, he noticed a glare. He realized that there were needles. It was a trap. <laughs> you can't fool me this time. I saw the needles, you mean goat. Oh no, I need to call for help immediately. When the little goat rushed out of the house, he saw his siblings approaching. He told them what had happened. Is that so? That wicked wolf will see what happens when you try to steal from goats. Here's the plan. A while later, the wolf left, carrying a big bag full of food. Nobody can outsmart me. I'm very clever. I'm super tough. <laughs> ah, my eyes. Then all the little goats started throwing the snowballs that they had scooped and made. Take this. this. Take, Take that. that. You wicked wolf. wolf. You wicked wolf. Ah, stop. It's snowballing from everywhere. Help me! Save me! The wolf let go of the bag with food and ran. He collided with the tree and all the snow on the branches fell on him. The little goat snapped a picture of the wolf looking like a snowman. We're going to hang this picture in the town square, you wicked wolf! <laughs> I hate snowman! And now... Uh, <laughs> I've turned into one! Uh... <laughs> he looks so funny! <laughs> Snow wolf! We showed him! <laughs> Let's go back! We need to finish decorating the tree! There's very little time to New Year's Day! The little goats went back to town happily. The townspeople started the countdown together. The last 10 seconds of New Year's Eve. Once upon a time, there lived an elderly wife and husband in an old house. 
The couple had no children and they both felt extremely lonely. I clean the house, I tidy up and I make food and you tend to the trees and flowers in the garden. But once we finish our work and night falls, wouldn't it also be great to have someone else to talk to? Instead, we go to sleep right after we eat. I feel so lonely. You're so right, my dear. It's as if time stands still. We must find something else to distract us. What do you say? Yes, my love. We must think of something. You haven't made cookies in a long time. I've actually been craving them for weeks. Good idea. Yes, today I'm going to bake a very different type of cookie. Different? Ha <laughs> ha, how so? I'm curious. When you finish, we can sit together in the garden, drink tea, and eat the cookies. The old woman went to the kitchen. She put on the counter the flour, sugar, and oil that she needed to bake the cookies. She added a little ginger from the ginger jar that she kept on the kitchen shelf. Then, after she kneaded all the ingredients together, she began making the cookies. Ginger is very good for you. It heals people. Let me add some. She made small balls of dough and placed them on the tray. Finally, she made a large cookie in the shape of a man, placed it on a tray and put the tray in the oven. While the cookies were in the oven, the wife thought, Hmm, when this gingerbread man is baked, I will show it to my husband and surprise him. Then, while we drink our tea, we can place him on an empty chair and chat with him. She put on her oven mitts and took out the gingerbread man from the oven. Happily, she looked at her masterpiece. Oh, it's beautiful, but it doesn't have eyebrows, a nose or a mouth. She immediately made his eyes out of raisins, his nose out of a hazelnut and mouth out of a little sweet pepper and watched in awe. Once I add the strawberries as the buttons for his shirt, it'll be complete. If only it could come alive! The instant she added the buttons, her wish came true. The gingerbread man jumped up into the middle of the tray. <laughs> Ow! It's so hot in here! I'm going out to the garden! Oh. The old woman was staring in shock. Oh God! You've heard our prayers! You sent us a wonderful grandson as sweet as a cookie. She ran straight after him into the garden. But the gingerbread man had no intention of stopping. He kept running around in the garden, laughing out loud. The gingerbread man is alive! He's going to be our grandson. Don't let him escape. Catch him! Her husband, who was also in shock, started chasing the cookie as well. Of course, two elderly people couldn't run that fast. The gingerbread man had run quite far ahead, and the old woman couldn't get her voice through to him. Don't run away, little gingerbread man! We aren't going to eat you! You're going to be our grandson! As the gingerbread man passed a farm, a cow saw him. Ooh, what a delicious smell! I want to eat you. I'm tired of hay. I'll catch you now. There's no way you can catch me no matter how hard you try. You keep eating your hay, you fat cow. Mm, you would, man. You just wait and see. The angry cow ran faster and chased after the cookie. The elderly couple and the cow were trying to keep up with the cookie. Passers-by stared in awe and watched them all run, trying to figure out what is going on. What a scene it was! <laughs> There's no need to run! I'm faster than you! No one can catch me! Because I'm made of ginger! I'm full of energy! The gingerbread man was provoking them to make them angry. Meanwhile, a pig that was up ahead noticed the group running. 
Then the gingerbread man shouted out to the pig as he passed him by. Hey, you fat pig! You eat everything! Wouldn't you like to eat me too? I'm very sweet! See if you can catch me! <laughs> the pig that heard this insult got very angry and started chasing the gingerbread man. Is that how it is? Come here, you mischievous cookie! The old couple and the cow couldn't catch me. You think you're going to catch me? You can't, because I'm made of ginger. I'm full of energy. <laughs> at this point, the gingerbread man was really having fun. He kept looking back at them and burst out laughing to make them angrier. He saw a lazy chicken sitting on top of a fence. Hello, I'm gingerbread man. Hi, you must be very sweet because there's a crowd chasing you. You too, Mrs. Chicken? Yes, I wonder what you taste like. As if we needed you too. First learn how to fly and maybe you'll catch me. You're just a non-flying bird. You can catch me because I'm made of ginger. I'm full of energy. <laughs> 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 Gingerbread man kept on running and came across a grazing sheep. Hey you! Grass hat cotton bag! Catch me! Ha 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 Come here, you rude cookie! If I catch you, I'm going to eat you in a gulp! Instead of saying bye bye, catch me and eat me! Don't say bye bye, catch me and eat me. Don't say bye bye, catch me and eat me. <laughs> the gingerbread man made it all the way to the end of the road, meaning to the bank of a river. He knew that he couldn't go in the water or else he would melt. While he was thinking of a plan, a fox appeared out of nowhere. The crafty fox was planning to trick him so he could eat him. I can take you across. Come on, get on my back. Oh. Don't be scared. Hurry! Oh! Ah! The gingerbread man trusted the fox and jumped on his back. The fox started swimming in the river. Meanwhile, the group that was chasing the gingerbread man reached the bank of the river and watched in awe at the scene. There was a boat tied nearby. The old couple untied the boat and started to row to chase the fox down the river. The old woman knew what the fox was planning to do, so they got as close as possible. My God, please protect my small gingerbread man. The fox started his cunning plan. My dear friend, my back is hurting, so I'm going to sink a little bit more into the water. Come on top of my head so that you don't drown. <coughs> the gingerbread man jumped on top of his head, and they continued down the river. The old couple shouted. Be careful! Hold tight! Be careful! This fox wants to eat you, don't be scared! Hold tight! Come to us! Don't be scared, come to us! The fox realized that his plan had been ruined, so he shook his head and the gingerbread man flew in the air. The fox opened his mouth as he waited for the cookie to fall in his mouth. But the gingerbread man was quick to act and jumped into the boat. But still, he was afraid of the elderly couple. Don't be scared, gingerbread man. We would never eat you. You are our grandson now. You will be a companion to us. We now have a grandson with whom we can chat with every night. We won't get bored at all, right, my dear? Oh, really? Even after I made you chase after me and I said all those rude things to others? Of course. Everyone can make mistakes. The important thing is to accept your mistakes and never repeat them. Okay, I promise that from now I'll be a very polite gingerbread child. First, I'm going to apologize from all the animals that I insulted. <laughs> you will be good. They returned home. The gingerbread man was now safe. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
together, they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her mother in a village near the forest. Her grandmother had made a red riding hood for her. She loved it so much that she wore it everywhere she went. That's why the people in the village called her Little Red Riding Hood. She loved visiting and spending time with her grandmother who lived and on the other side of the princess. forest. Lived happily ever after. One day, the lumberjack who lived in the forest came to Little Red still, Riding Hood's house to, to let them know that help. Grandma uh, was sick. Is there anything that you need? Her mother, who heard this, prepared medicine from different herbs and called out to Little Red Riding Hood. Sweetheart, I prepared a medicine for your grandma. I also cooked a healthy meal made of vegetables. Please, bring these to her at once. Don't wander away. Stay on the path. And don't talk to strangers, please. Yes, Mum. I miss Grandma so much. Please put everything in my basket. I'll go right away. Don't forget to tell her we love her so much. OK, Mum. Of course I will. So Little Red Riding Hood went on her way. It was a sunny morning. There were butterflies fluttering around. She was singing and dancing among the butterflies on the way to her grandmother's. Birds were singing in the forest. She held tightly the basket of food and medicine that her mother had given her. There were so many beautiful flowers around her that Little Red Riding had got distracted and forgot what her mother had warned her about. She wandered off her path and went into the forest. What beautiful flowers! I need to gather some and make a bouquet. Grandma will love them. While gathering some flowers, she didn't realize that she had wandered off her path and had gone deep into the forest. Mmm, <coughs> these are all so nice. These are nice too. Oh, these smell better. Oh, I think I'm lost. As she was trying to find her way back to the path, a giant wolf suddenly appeared in front of her. Little Red Riding Hood was so afraid that she screamed, dropping her basket to the ground. Where are you going in such a hurry, little girl? What is your name? You are so sweet. People call me Little Red Riding Hood. I am taking some medicine, some food, and some nice flowers to my grandma, who is sick. You don't need to be afraid of me. I am not a bad wolf. Look, you drop your basket. Here, take it. I just want to help you. Actually, the wolf was thinking about the food in the basket. He thought that he would never go hungry again <laughs> if he could also have the food in her grandmother's house. He befriended Little Red Riding Hood so he could fool her. He was a sly wolf. Thank you for helping me. You're so kind, sir. But I need to hurry up. My grandma is expecting me because she is so ill. I need to bring this medicine and food to her, otherwise she won't get better. Is your grandmother's house so far? Just a little ahead where the pine trees are. It's a small cottage, just between them. Okay, then you continue gathering flowers, sweet little girl. I am glad we met. Take care. Once he learned where the grandmother's house was, the wolf hurried and took the shortcut to the house. The old lady asked from the inside when the wolf knocked on the door. Who is this? My dear grandchild, is it you? Yes, it's me, Grandma. I brought you medicine and food. The door is open, dear. 
You can come in. The wolf barged in happily. He grabbed the grandmother and locked her in a chest. He then wore the grandmother's clothes that he found in her wardrobe. He put on her hat and glasses and lay in bed under the covers to wait for Little Red Riding Hood. Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood, who could not find her way back, realized that she was lost and started crying. What am I going to do now? Why did I listen to my mother? She told me to stay on the path. A hunter who was in the forest heard the girls crying and approached her. Hmm? Why are you crying, little girl? Don't cry. I lost my way in the forest while gathering some flowers. My grandma is sick. I need to bring her some medicine. It is very dangerous to walk alone in the forest. Don't be afraid. I will take you where you are going. Thank you so much, sir. So, may I ask you something? Have you seen a wolf around? Yes. He was with me a few minutes ago. He asked me where my grandma's house is. He ran away and disappeared. Oh my god! We need to hurry! We need to stop him before he hurts your grandma! They quickly headed towards the house. When the little girl knocked on the door, the wolf, imitating the grandmother's voice, asked who was at the door. My dear grandchild, I've been expecting you. The door is open. You can come in. Little Red Riding Hood didn't recognize her voice, but thought that it was due to her illness. Okay, you are safe now in your grandma's house. I'm going back to the forest to hunt that wolf. Don't forget, I'm always around. Red Riding Hood stepped in and sat by the bed near the wolf and asked why it was so dark inside. The wolf had drawn the curtains. Little Red Riding Hood was very surprised that her grandma had changed a little because of her illness. Oh, Grandma, what big ears you have! All the better to hear you with, darling. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have! All the better to see you with! Oh, Grandma, what big hands you have! All the better to hug you with, my dear child! And your teeth? What sharp teeth you have! All the better to eat the food you brought me! When Little Red Riding Hood heard his real voice, she realized that it was the wolf that she had met in the forest. Oh, help! Help! The hunter, who hadn't gone far, turned back and went inside. He hit the wolf on the head with a piece of wood so he could let go of Little Red Riding Hood. He tied the wolf up and took him far away from the forest. Mm, you mm. bad wolf! I finally got you! The forest will now be free of you! The hunter saved the grandmother and got her out of the chest. Little Red Riding Hood, that'll teach you. Don't ever disobey your mother's words. All this happened to you because of that. They ate their meal together with the hunter that had saved their lives. The grandmother took her medicine and started feeling much better. Little Red Riding Hood ran back to her house before it got dark. She would never disobey her mother again.
One day, someone knocked on the door at Stylish's house. Stylish! Stylish! I wasn't expecting anyone. Who could that be? Oh, Ruffle, hi! <laughs> What's up? Stylish! It's been a while since we last saw each other. Did someone say Ruffle? The wolf stood by the window to listen to the conversation inside. Ruffle, you look so beautiful. <laughs> I've been planning to have a picnic for a long time, so I need a dress for that occasion. What? Ruffle is having a picnic? Or, or is she planning a surprise for me? Okay, Ruffle, how about a blue dress? You'll be as beautiful as a blue sky. I'm not sure. I can't picture it. Hmm, okay. How about green? Just like a lush forest. I'm not sure. All right, then. How about a yellow dress? Bright like the sun! I don't know, Stylish. It's hard to imagine it without seeing the dresses. Well, I can't do all these dresses in one day. It'll take a few days, I'm sorry. Mm, I thought you would know what kind of dress would suit me best. How would I know what you like? I wish there were a way I could see how the dresses would fit even without them. Ah, my dear Ruffle, anything would suit you fine. Hmm, actually there is. I'll be right back. I'm not here to have pictures drawn, Stylish. I need a dress urgently. Wait, Ruffle, don't be so impatient. Oh, it looks great. Wolf couldn't help himself and joined the conversation. Well, Ruffle... Wolf? What are you doing here? None of your concern, Ruffle. If you're dressing up for me, I just want you to know I don't really like yellow. Ha! <laughs> are you kidding me? Why would I dress up for you? What? Are you dressing for someone else? Wolf, would you leave us alone? We're very busy. No, no, tell me! Whom are you dressing up for? For elephant? Or lion? Wolf, have a nice day. Stylish closed the window and they continued choosing dresses. This looks nice, but I want something else. I need a summer dress. Like this? The wolf tried to decipher what they were saying. <laughs> That's it. So, you are going to meet someone else, huh? I need to find out who this guy is. Wolf pondered a little and came up with something. Mm. Ruffa wants a new dress for her date. So that means she's meeting someone who likes the dress. The wolf came back to the window and climbed in. He grabbed the patterns from the girl's hands. Let go, wolf! I said let go of it! No way! Not until you tell me who you're having this picnic with! It's none of your business! Wolf grabbed the rest of the patterns from Ruffle's hand and escaped through the window. Is this it? No, it's not. Is this it? Neither is this. Ah, all of these are good for my Ruffle. Wolf couldn't guess which dress Ruffle preferred. However, he started asking around to find the guy who'd like the dress. Hey, tell me! Do you like this dress? Oh, it's beautiful. Huh? What? Is Ruffle dressing up for you? What? 
What are you talking about? All I know is that this dress would be better in yellow. What about this dress? I don't like it that much. The first one is the prettiest, but it should be yellow. Wolf, are you looking for a gift for someone? Hmm, so it's not you. Wolf went to another house. Do you like this dress? Hmm, it should have patterns. The wolf continued. Do you like this dress? Do you like this dress? Do you like this dress? Wolf asked all possible suitors for Ruffle, but he couldn't find anyone that liked the dress. Who is Ruffle dressing up for? Nobody liked his dresses! Meanwhile, Stylish had already made the dress for Ruffle. Oh, this is great! Just what I wanted! You look very beautiful! It will be a wonderful picnic! Thanks for everything! Ruffles spread her blanket on the floor, took sandwiches out of her basket, poured some juice and waited. Where is this guy? <laughs> hey, Ruffle! Here he is. Yes, Wolf? I went to the lion, the elephant, the tiger, the zebra. So tell me, who is invited to this picnic? Whom are you dressed up for? For someone very handsome, for someone who is cheerful, a little mischievous, but always loving. Who is he? Is he more handsome than me? <laughs> he is just as handsome as you. As much as me. Just as much as me. Apricots! I wanted to play a little prank on you, Wolf. I prepared all this for you. I thought we could have a nice picnic together. Yippee! <laughs> Once upon a time, seven little goats and their mother lived happily in a sunny little town. The seven little goats walked merrily to school every day. One day, their teacher talked to the students about famous structures built by the Spanish architect Antoni Gaudi. Teacher, what does architect mean? An architect is a person that sketches the blueprints of the buildings we see around, such as houses, schools and hospitals. They follow some construction rules and make sure the buildings are safe. Kids, did you know that Gaudi used nature as inspiration for his buildings? He designed the interior walls of buildings resembling three bark and spiral stairs that similar to that of a snail shell. Teacher, I'm curious about these buildings. Where can I find them? These buildings are in Barcelona, in Spain. After school, the little goats returned home and their mother greeted each one with a kiss. One of the little goats shared what they had learned about the Spanish architect. Mom! Can we go to Barcelona? All right, kids. Let's all go on a weekend trip. Yay! The seven little goats were so excited about their trip 
that they couldn't stop talking about it everywhere. All the townspeople, as well as the wolf, heard about the little goat's trip to Barcelona. They set out for Barcelona on the weekend. After the car trip, they left their luggage in their hotel room. Mother goat gathered the little goats around her. Our first stop is Architect Gaudi's Park Güell. Let's go! As the little goats followed their mum, the last one walking in line thought he had seen the wolf in the hotel lobby. When they arrived at Park Güell, they visited the buildings that seemed to be made of sugar and cookies. They strolled happily in the terrace that resembled ocean waves made of colourful glass and tiles. While the happy goats roamed around excitedly, the wolf in disguise offered an apple from his basket to one of the little goats. The little goat, however, recognised Wolf's hands and ran to his mother. The wolf knew then that he couldn't easily fool the little goat. Mom! Mom! There's someone over there! Where, sweetie? He's gone. That's weird. Never mind, Mom. The next stop was artist Salvador Dali's house, which had been turned into a museum. One of the little goats noticed an artist among the crowd painting in the corner and thought it was the wolf. Wolf took advantage of the crowd and tried to put the little goat into his satchel. The bad wolf once again had failed, so he ran away. This wolf doesn't give up. Let's be careful and not get separated. Yeah, he went grew a moustache, thinking we wouldn't be able to recognize him. Where are you, kids? Don't go far. Remember, evil wolves can be anywhere. There's nothing to be scared of, Mom. We took care of it. <laughs> Let's go inside and view the artworks. Tonight, we're going to see a flamenco show. We shouldn't be late to the hotel. After the museum, Mother Goat and the little goats returned to the hotel and got ready to see the show. What kind of a dance is flamenco? Dancers try to express their emotions through the tapping of their feet, intricate hands, and body movements. They wear special costumes. Yes, yes, colorful dresses, but mostly red. I'm curious. We'll see them tonight. Come on, let's hurry. In the evening, the little goats went to see the show, not knowing that Wolf would be there too. When the show was about to start, the youngest goat suspected one of the dancers was Wolf himself. Mom, look! Shh! Be quiet, the show has started. Mother Goat didn't recognize Wolf and watched the show delightedly. The youngest goat went backstage to expose Wolf. One of the little goats saw his brother leave, so he followed him. While dancing, Wolf watched the little goat's every move. So when he saw him enter the backstage, he exited the stage, still dancing.
Wolf caught the goat and quickly put him in his satchel. As he was about to escape, he ran into the second little goat, who followed his siblings. I know who you are. Oh, do you now? Then tell me who I am. You are the bad wolf. Let go of my siblings. No way. You'll have to catch me first. <laughs> At that moment, Wolf got back on the stage. The little goat, who was trying to blend in with the dancers, spotted his mother and siblings among the spectators. Mother goat was engrossed in the show but got surprised when she saw the little goat dancing on the stage. Oh no! What's your brother doing on the stage? Yeah! That's our brother! And the one dancing and holding the satchel is the bad wolf. At that moment, the rhythm changed to a quicker pace. With a big thud, Wolf tripped and fell down in the middle of the stage. His wig fell off his head. The little goat got out of the satchel that the wolf had dropped. Mother goat stood up in a state of nerves. It's bad wolf! Get him! Mother Goat and the little goats ran onto the stage and began to headbutt Wolf. Oh, 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 my back, my feet. Oh, oh, oh. Bad Wolf escaped again. Let's try to forget about this incident. It's been a tiring day. Let's go to bed. Good morning, kids! Guess where we're going today? Where, Mommy? Where? To the statue of Christopher Columbus. Who's that, Mommy? I'll tell you about him once we get there. Christopher Columbus was an Italian sailor, explorer, and colonizer. He crossed the Atlantic Ocean, sailing on his ship, and discovered new places. The American continent is one of them. How interesting! What an adventure! I'd like to explore new places too! Meanwhile, Wolf was in a Christopher Columbus disguise. None of the goats recognized him. Wolf hadn't given up and was still after them. He approached the three little goats walking in the back and distracted them by talking about ships and the ocean. Come, I'll show you my ship. Yay! <laughs> Excited, the little goats followed Wolf. Wolf boarded the ship with the little goats. He removed his hat and wig and made himself known to the little goats. Set sail and you cannot escape now. <laughs> ha! Think again, bad wolf. Come on, guys, jump! The little goats jumped and caught the sail. The mainsail spun in its place and around the mast due to the goat's weight and pushed wolf into the sea. Eat me again, but I'll never give up. Uh, uh, mommy! Uh, uh. 
Help! <laughs> they made me board the ship, officer. I'm innocent. I swear. <laughs> I hate getting wet. <laughs> We watched everything from the Cerulean's cameras, Pet Wolf. We know you're lying. I'm so sorry. Please let me go. I won't do that again. Forget it. You'll get your punishment first. For two months, you'll be picking garbage on the shore. No! I hate getting wet! <laughs> Once upon a time, far away from the city, Mother Goat and her seven little goats lived happily in a farm in the forest. One day, the farm animals woke up to something that sounded like grunts coming from the forest. They had never heard this before. Mom? I don't know, dear. We'll find out soon enough. Mom, I'm scared. Me too! These sounds are scary! Mother Goat put on some clothes so she could go outside and find out what was going on. Stay here and wait for me. Do not open the door for strangers. Understand? Understood! Understood. Mother Goat left home and went to meet with the other animals of the farm. But the noises were getting louder and scarier. The scared little goats hid under the table. We have to find out where those grunts are coming from. Chickens aren't laying eggs and cows are not producing milk because they're afraid. Yes, we have to find a solution immediately. Otherwise, we'll starve to death. Just then, the noise stopped. And everything went back to normal. Hooray! It's gone! Everything's back to normal! Still, we should look into it. Is that really necessary? See, it's gone! What if it happens again? We'll find a solution then! Don't be so pessimistic! Come on everybody! Get to work! All animals went back to work as if nothing had happened. The next day, they woke up to those dreadful sounds again. Like the day before, the sounds died down at noon. Nobody but Mother Goat was worried. Mother Goat was bewildered. But there was nothing she could do. Concerned, she went home where the little goats were awaiting her. Mom, what's happening? We don't know, honey. There's no one doing anything. Crestfallen mother goat looked down. It was upsetting not knowing what to tell her kids. As it got dark, 
everyone at the farm went to sleep. Seven pairs of eyes were wide open in the dark. The kids couldn't sleep. We have to figure this out. But how? Investigate and head in the direction where we heard the noise. The guard won't let us out this late at night. But how do we get out without being seen? I have an idea. Listen to me. The old guard was dozing off. Suddenly, he saw three big silhouettes approaching. He immediately stood up and pointed the flashlight at them. The little goats were wearing mother goat's clothes. They had climbed on top of each other so they could look bigger. Who are you? Where are you going at this hour? We are craving fresh grass. There's none left at home. I can't let you out at this late. It's dangerous out there. If we don't eat, we won't have the strength to work tomorrow. Right, girls? The guard didn't know what to say. It was the first time he had to deal with something like this. All right, you can go, but come back quickly. They got off of each other behind the first tree and went toward where the noise came from during the day. They walked for a long time. And finally, they arrived at an empty field illuminated by huge lamps. There was heavy equipment, building materials and chopped down trees everywhere. This doesn't look good. We should tell Mom about this. No, you won't be telling anyone. I'll chop every tree in the forest and sell the lumber. I'll be very rich. You nosy brats can't stop me. We should have guessed. The wolf tied the little goats firmly and locked them in a room. The poor kids were so scared, but they didn't show their fear in front of the wolf. We have to get out. How? We must stop the wolf from destroying the whole forest. Can anyone think of something? Each there, we'll be free. First, they nibbled on the ropes, just as their mother had taught them. The ones who broke free helped free the others. Then, they climbed on top of one another to reach the air vent and climbed out. There was no one in sight, but they could hear the wolf snoring. The little goat sent two of their siblings back to the farm to tell others about it. If he cuts down all the trees, all the creatures in the forest will die too. We must stop him. How? They huddled and whispered their plan to each other. Meanwhile, two of the little goats reached the farm. Unfortunately, the old guard had fallen asleep so they couldn't get inside. The fence was too high for them to jump over it. The little goats came up with a solution. While one crouched, the other one got on top of its back to jump over the fence. Inside. The two little goats ran to their house and woke their mum up. 
They told her everything they had seen and what had happened to them. Come on, let's get to work. Meanwhile, at the construction site, two little goats found glue among the building materials and poured it all over the wolf who was sleeping. The other three little goats climbed on the backhoe, an excavating machine. While one operated the steering wheel, the other one sat on the brake and accelerator pedal. The third one operated the machine's massive loader. The little goat that operated the steering wheel turned on the ignition and the machine roared to life. The little goats were nervous, but they were determined to put their plan into action. The little goat in charge of the pedals pushed down the accelerator and the machine started to gain speed. The third little goat operated the machine's loader. The wolf woke up when he heard the noise. He immediately realized what was happening. You miserable goats, so you managed to escape! No matter how hard the wolf tried, he couldn't get up. He didn't understand what was holding him back. In a final effort, he lunged forward and his fur got stuck to the bed due to the glue the little goats had poured. The wolf ran after the backhoe. He stopped in front of it just as the machine was about to enter the area where all the lumber and chopped trees were. Stop right there, you miserable goats! The little goats brought the machine to a sudden stop. The wolf looked back and noticed his back fur was gone. At that moment, all the farm animals led by Mother Goat arrived at the construction site and they were appalled at what they saw. Congratulations, my kids. You helped avoid a huge disaster from happening. They cleaned up the site and planted new trees to make the area green again. What about the bad wolf? He's still running all around the forest without his fur. I'll make you pay for this, you miserable little goats. You'll pay. On a cold, snowy day, everything was covered in a blanket of snow. Mia's cousin, Sophie, came to visit her. My dear cousin, I'm so glad you're here. It's been such a long time. I've missed you so much. I miss you too, Mia. It's 
it was Mia's birthday, so Gerda had brought a beautiful cake. Gerda is my favourite cake. How did you know? They all celebrated Mia's birthday together. <laughs> Happy birthday to you! In the evening, they sat by the fireplace. It was a good idea to tell your grandmother that you'll spend the night here, Gerda. We're expecting a blizzard. The Snow Queen captures those who get lost in such weather and turns them into ice. The Snow Queen? How do you know this? Everyone knows that. It's a true story. Haven't you heard about her? Of course, Sophie didn't know that Mia used to be the Snow Queen. We haven't heard of her, right, Gerda? No, we haven't. I believe it. She's so powerful. I wish I had powers like her. Apparently, this silly girl doesn't know that her cousin used to be my Snow Queen. Interesting. It's been a long day, so I'm tired. Where can I sleep, Mia? We'll sleep in my room. Everything's ready. Come on. After Sophie went to bed, Mia and Gerda kept on chatting. My cousin Sophie is very keen on witches and their powers, but she doesn't need to know that I used to be the Snow Queen. So let's keep it between us, please. Don't worry, Mia. Meanwhile, the witch was scheming an evil plan. This girl might be the new Snow Queen I've been looking for. Let's see what you'll do once Sophie becomes my new Snow Queen and strikes fear into your hearts. <laughs> the next day, Sophie went to drop Gerda home, so they got on the sleigh together. Mia waved goodbye from the door. Goodbye! But the Wicked Witch had other plans for them. Yes, keep going! <laughs> oh no! Avalanche! Run faster! Come on, girls! Now we can go! <laughs> Gerda managed to get out of the avalanche. Oh no! Sophie, where are you? Okay, come on girls, hang on! There you go! Gerda couldn't find Sophie, so she immediately went back home to tell Mia what had happened. Take me there now! We must find Sophie! The witch, however, brought Sophie to her castle and was about to make her drink a potion. Yes! This potion will make you so powerful! Who are you? Where am I? Calm down. I'll make you the new Snow Queen. Then you'll have the power that you've always wanted. Oh, I'd love that, but how? Like this. Oh, is this really me? Wow, I can't believe this. Yes, it's you. You're now the most beautiful woman in the world, the evil Snow Queen! I am really beautiful. Look, your Killjoy cousin and her friends! They're your greatest enemies now! <laughs> Ha 
Mia and Gerda were looking for Sophie in the snow. Sophie! Sophie! We've checked everywhere. Where is she? Look, track some of the sleigh. Let's follow them. What? The witch's castle? The witch kidnapped Sophie. I hope she hasn't done anything bad to her. Come on, quick, we must find her. We have to be careful, the witch may see us. Sophie, the witch has turned her into the Snow Queen. Come on, kiddos. Hey, what's happening, Gerda? You will be ice sculptures forever. <laughs> Mia used the magic powers that she still had. Wait, Sophie! The witch is deceiving you! We're here to help you! So you came here to help me, huh? <laughs> I can change you back! Please let me help! I'm the powerful Snow Queen. No one can take my powers away! I'll show you now! Just as Sophie was about to cast another spell, Mia acted before her. What is this? What happened to me? We need to get out of here, Gerda. Quick! Mia and Gerda quickly left the castle and went away. Run all you want. This isn't over yet. I'll destroy you both. Sophie has become the Snow Queen. What shall we do now? We have to change her back. Why did we escape then? Because I need to figure out a way to undo the witch's spell without harming Sophie. I know how. What is it? The magic mirror. It worked on you before. Let's see if Mia and Gerda can free Sophie from the witch's spell, who turned her into the new Snow Queen. Kids, don't forget to watch our next episode, The Magic Mirror. <laughs>